on Saturday, one on Sunday, and one on Monday. I haven't taken any of the rest of the week because I do not want that stuff in my system. Not oh, yeah. her. She said, how are you taking one per day when people need two to four? Because it says two every two to four to six hours. I don't I care. Said, how do that's people that. do that? I, I threw mine in the trash. I was like, I don't want that. I don't even want that stuff in my house. <laughs> I've got two. The, my Before I had it, he gave me some from my hip. And then well, he gave me some. For me, it doesn't do anything to I have a high tolerance for pain. But it all it does is make my bowels like hard. Like it's oh. it's horrible. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't I don't want that. Like it's really bad. Oh well, it puts me to sleep instantly. I go to sleep within five minutes. Yeah, I don't like I don't like feeling like that. That's why I said that's on one. I can imagine taking two every forty six hours. That's one for just the whole day. I don't even those people that like go and try to get those prescribed regularly. It's like how are you functioning? They hook. They're addicted. It's I know, addicted. but if you if it puts you to sleep, how do people that are hooked to them? What are you doing? <laughs> how do you? How do people that um? Are hooked to them. How are they functioning? It's, it's just like a functioning crack addict or personal alcohol. Are, I there's a functioning crack addict. Are you yeah. speaking from experience? <laughs> is that a thing? A functioning My father is a functioning alcoholic where they can drink excessively. You'd be like, how is it going to work every day doing their job and not killing themselves? And they drink that much alcohol and they don't have hangovers. Their body become immune to it. Right. And that's that's an addict. That you can function. There are people who are addicts who can't function, and there's functioning addicts. And you know, I, oh, I no, I I believe that. I'm just wondering how the you're functioning oxy addict. I don't know. That's why. You, but I tell people the problem that I have with all of this. Why your uh, cocaine? Somebody said, "Why his arm ain't in the sling?" Because we I'm, just asked I'm that because he's why, not. Why are you on there? He's look, not being because I listen. I got a Patreon that I'm about to load for y'all after we do this. I show show y'all him trying to get out the car to come over here. First of all, we told him not to come over here, and he he didn't uh, sauntered up in here anyway. Sauntered. Yes. I walked. Well, you well you kind of hobbled a little bit because your shoulder was a little. <laughs> your shoulder. Had the nerve to bring food. And then had the nerve to bring me and my mother food. I was like, first well, of all, I'm going to get the food. I ordered it in David when he picked it up, and I just put it in the car. Who is David? My friend. His friend David. Mm -hmm. I don't know why he didn't stay home. He just could because not. Because I needed to get out of the house. And he driving around his community the other day to go to the trash. <laughs> to the trash can. <laughs> I wanted to make sure my skills were still intact. You wanted to make sure what? My driving skills were still intact. If you were going to forget how to drive in a matter of four or five No, years. it's a matter of making sure this arm can do it all by itself that I don't really need the function of the right shoulder. I'm pretty right sure now. the doctor tells you not no, to No, the doctor that is not I'm in sure. his instructions. But I'm sure they Because if you wheel it, you, you need your shoulder. No, I do not. They're probably assuming you had good go sense that you wouldn't be out driving. <laughs> do you drive with both hands? I do. I drive 10 and, and 2. Nine. It's not required, though. I drive 10 and 2. In a Volvo, it is. Right. And cause a lot of pain. Yeah, and right. And I said, you can't take the pain pills because they knock you out. So then what you really did? Just suffer with the pain. When the last time you took one of them Oxycontin? <laughs> Monday. Oh. That's probably what he uh, now, We need to hide the keys and put them in an Uber. Right. <laughs> Look, put, put him right in the Uber ow, ow. To, send him, to send him back home. Sorry, Scott. No. I will not be trapped. I cannot believe you. <laughs> I'm, I cannot. I'm already trapped in the house. I told him on the glass I've been clean and dusted. <laughs> Head folks overhanging blind. Oh, you have restless leg syndrome. You right. Need to get that fixed too. I don't understand why you don't just sit down. Sit down. Be still. Y'all sound like other ones. Be still and wait I on the Lord. <laughs> That's the same. He had done so much when I got home to him. He was out of practice. I hopped in the car. I said, What are you doing? I'm cleaning the balances to go back over, over the blind. The balances? What? How many was it? 29 or 30? I have 23 windows. 25. Oh my God. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. Damon came over and hung the last ones I needed hung. And the valances, I took them down and cleaned them with um. I had to put a baseball cap on them. What? Because they have hands. Because them edges are not together. Oh, my. I'm going to the barbershop Saturday. 
Hey, girl. Hey, good day, thinkers, thought leaders, progressives, and dreamers. I'm Craig the Writer Stewart, and this is the Facebook and YouTube live version. Right. There's so much to say. That's These are my thoughts in my voice on black. I can let you chill all day long. In in between. Between. I can sit still all day long, too, and not do anything. Why not? It's it's really a profession. Unless I'm like, you just... have to practice. <laughs> you, you need to learn how to live in the life of Riley. <laughs> I have to be really tired in pain or well, not. you are tired. I'm never tired. The only requirement for me is the sun comes up. That's it. I can be I, still. I can. You are day. before me, so how do you tell me you can just lay still? <laughs> but that's because I can't sleep. Just because I worked in corporate America for so long, that I can't. I can't sleep past seven o'clock. The black Martha. Still but I can do more than I do. In the, in, in but I can lay still day. and not do anything for how day. long? All day. I can lay in the bed all day long. So can and watch I. TV and so be can I. And order food. Not me. And everything. And, and and be fine with it being plenty of stuff for me to have to do. Not me. Can step over clothes on the floor. And oh, you no. You see how anal I am in my house. Like I I've learned to just be like, okay. Like it the dishes from last night are still in the sink. I'm like, this. <laughs> <laughs> listen. Um yeah, you need to practice that. You don't know how to. Somebody said you need to be still. I am fine until you're not. Right. <laughs> so right now I'm fine. He just had to walk up here. He got these little sweatpants on. Why are you showing these folks? <laughs> See, he th he just put this. He, he's not coordinated. He put on what he could he could manage to get on, <laughs> and he he was struggling trying to put on his clothes. So this is what he came up with. It, it ain't really coordinated, <laughs> but this is what he was able to put on. It worked. At least I matched the colors. These little sweatpants. Somebody said, "Is he a park ranger?" <laughs> <laughs> can we can we call your doctor's office and ask for the uh, post surgical procedure? Right. What? What's the protocol? We want to know if you're compliant. I am compliant. As long as the shoulder is is being handled carefully, I am compliant. Currently, it's not. It is. It's, it's hanging. But is that is that the post op procedure? Yes, I I can't. I'm not supposed to wear the sling. Right, he's supposed to stretch his arm from time to time. I can't keep it like this because it'll get locked. So I'm oh, supposed to stretch right. it. and we don't need him walking around here looking all locked okay. up permanently. But I don't think that Look, he's. Can you imagine if he was around here locked up permanently with that arm up there? <laughs> Rita, the people were looking for you. We thought you were missing. We were about to put out an APB on you, girl. It was clear in here. It was no smoke in the room. <laughs> you know, Rita smokes them Benson and Hedges. The room just be cloudy. <laughs> the room just be cloudy. They said you got on your sweatpants ca capris. <laughs> your sweatpants capris. When I say the water coming out of the refrigerator, it's perfect now. Mm. Oh, that's why you have on a button. Yeah, he shirt. couldn't put on a shirt that had to go over his head. So that's you why can't I lift your arms up. I'm running a rehabilitation home. <laughs> patient one and patient two. Well, let me get on out of here. <laughs> come, come on this side, Scott. <laughs> this is the side for the healthy people. <laughs> the sick and shut in on that. Don't talk about us. We're fine. <laughs> Now, what if you got stopped by the police and they just asked you to put your hands up? Scott, we're not going to even talk about it. They no reason because I couldn't get it up. <laughs> my God, to that. Yes, it is almost my birthday. It's Wednesday. Oh, goodness. My birthday is Wednesday. So, Elliot, what did you want to get me for my birthday? You don't need anything. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> that, that, my... You know, my little, my little ticket is fine. That's, mm -hmm. that's you it. don't need anything. What ticket. is going on for this birthday? There's no soiree happening, is there? Well, there is, but I wasn't going to invite you because I knew you were going to try to come. Really? Because you don't need to be trying to You don't need to be over here. Whether I'm trying to come or not. Leonard is having something at his house. Oh, no, I'm not going out there. Yeah, see, it's, it, that's the other thing. I said that is too far for you to be driving. I'm not going out there. Anymore. Leonard, I swear he lives in town. He is in oh, Lake Lanier. near no. going out there with Right, yes. right. Did you see his zip code? Yes, I uh, and I googled the directions. It takes me uh, was it forty minutes? Uh huh. Uh huh. That's like driving from Baltimore to DC. Yeah, I was like, mm, I guess I'll pack a lunch. <laughs> Come on, Taurus. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna eat before I go to Lenard's <laughs> on Saturday. I will give you guys. Well, I don't know if I'm, I might give y'all some Patreon. We may not. This Chef Jack gonna come Sunday. This she says she'll come Sunday. Oh. Well, she's, she's, still, still, she's still trying to get Jack home here to cook. 
Well, no, she said she needs to come and talk because she was going through so much with her son. Oh. And that girl and the baby. Mm. So her son has a baby on the way? Yeah, uh, did you send a birthday oh, list? Had the baby. And the baby uh. has a hole in her. Abdomen. Oh, that's the baby. Oh, right. you know what? Alicia said, you know, you need to get you some staff because your back will lock up. Yeah, my back will lock up. But they don't do that because I don't do all them heavy squats no more. I'm clear about my you need age. get you some what? A more staff because, you know, helping y'all. And then sometimes. <laughs> and then sometimes I'm, I'm, no, no, no. I'm going to them too. And then. Well, um, tell Alicia, you ain't lifting nothing over here. No way. What's she talking about your back going to lock up? No, he because you know when I sometimes I my back would go out, but that was because I was trying to still lift and squat all that heavy weight. I don't I don't do all that no more. You should come to Pilates if your back locked up. That's good for your back. I'm not going at six in the morning. You go too early. Is that the only class? It's six no, in the morning. I went today at nine thirty. You do not like those exercises, honey. We don't have a noon class. You do a yoga they do. They have a noon. Yeah, I'd like I'm to do a noon to class. Oh. You're certified to teach Pilates. To teach yoga. Oh, oh. yoga. Elliot, uh -huh. um, I was about to say something to you. I don't remember. Now. My question was, oh. huh? what, what, what do you tell the people you want for your birthday? Because that's the question. I ain't telling you nobody wish list. No, <laughs> I don't usually ask them for nothing. Look. Money, give me money. Oh well, then I will. I will put. I'm gonna pay a twenty dollar bill on you. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> give me money. Pin it to his sundress with the bag out. <laughs> I'm not gonna wear a sundress. I'm gonna wear, I'm gonna wear a mini skirt to let you hoes know I still got it. I'm wearing a mini skirt because I need y'all to know I still got it. Um, <laughs> He's got to that. But no, I don't usually ask, like Carlton's mother asked me like a couple weeks ago, hey, send me a list of things that you want. Or that you need. And then uh somebody asked me today. Who asked me today? Somebody asked me today. And I was just like, oh, I don't like. Telling people, you know what I mean? Because it's just like, first of all, everybody's budget is different, and then you know, you be like, Oh, yeah, I saw this uh shirt over here. Okay, so when I bought my house, uh -huh. my friend had a conversation with me, and she said, Because I was uncomfortable like, about that too, and I and she said, People want to celebrate you, and you need to let them celebrate you mm -hmm. and be okay with it. But it's just funny, like when people say, Well, what you want for your oh, I know it was my friend Kim asked me today, and I was just like. Girl, now I can tell you some stuff I want, but <laughs> yeah, you understand what I'm saying? But like, how do you tell somebody, oh, I saw this cologne that I like that I would like for you to purchase? And, well, I mean, they could get you a gift card for Sephora or something. I mean, yeah. I don't know if they have this at Sephora. Oh, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. <laughs> no shade to Sephora. <laughs> you can get you some products or something from Sephora. Now you talk, Stacey said, tell them to pay off that backyard work. Yeah, let me give you the balance for, the, uh, for, for what's due out here. When it tells Stacey when it's finished, maybe they will. Right. I, I, I thought it was going to be finished this week, y'all. Well, I might add $20 to so it. So that means he owns me some money. Right? <laughs> Scott's about to add $20 for you know me. That means uh, you owe me some money, then, right? I, I owe you money? Because what was our bet? They bet y'all. Now, first of all, we didn't bet uh, that. Yes, we did. No, we, we didn't. Bet. We no, bet. we didn't. We bet. Come over here. Come over here. Uh -huh. No, we didn't. It was $20. <laughs> it was 20 And I told y'all wasn't bet. No, sorry. It's $20. I told you that. Uh, what did I say I wanted? What did I say we were betting? I we said, were betting fifty dollars. No, but I had said yeah. I, <laughs> I. I did not. I did not want. I did not say twenty. First of all, we said twenty dollars. But I, I said he wasn't going to be finishing. It's a fifty dollar bet. You was laying. It was not fifty dollars. It was twenty. And I said, Why would I bet twenty dollars? Because I said to you, I said I don't want no twenty. I said, it's I think it was seventy five. That was somebody else. Was talking it about. was more I than that. It was, it was something because, oh, excuse me, I said something else. Well, what was it? That I said, well, I, if I get it, you pay off, pay for, for something. What was it I said to you? You know what I'm talking about. You pay off. Oh, you said you went get the patio furniture. Oh yeah, that's what it was. I told him, I said, if I was right, then you pay for my patio furniture. <laughs> Because I knew I was going to win. Because it was him. Well, if he knew he was going to win, he should have bet it, right? I, you know, yeah. I had $50. Because I, you know, I'm trying to say your budget. That's was that's some, uh, some pricey furniture. Well, that's some pricey furniture. You know, if, if, I, if, if I had won, I'd have got the most expensive patio furniture. <laughs> and I'd have reached for his Amex card. <laughs> <laughs> ah, thank you, Avonda. And Avonda, yes, I am getting your emails, niece. I don't know why you thought I wasn't getting your emails. I had just responded to one of your emails, Avonda. 
the water in the um, fridge is is fixed now. Yes, I taste. Well, I never tasted it before. Um, you didn't want one. Be careful, Elliot. <laughs> really, Elliot? Mm. <laughs> so, um, and I don't usually do sink water, but that requires sink water. First of all, but all the, water filtered, the whole house is filtered. Care. You can get water. You can get water out the toilet. Oh, it's filtered. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, water yeah. in the toilet is filtered. Well, let's, let's you go in there and say, I'm part of the toilet. I watch you. Oh my God. I'm not sampling any toilet water. <laughs> but I did just do a, a market research thing earlier today for paid for your say. I'm waiting on my $200 from that. It was on baby wipes. It was on baby wipes. You use a certain brand in the toilet? It's for my children. <laughs> I, I use baby wipes for my children. <laughs> How many do you have? I have two. <laughs> I have two children. <laughs> what are their names? <laughs> one is Chase and one is Jayla. <laughs> okay. And Jayla's a girl? Jayla's a girl. <laughs> Chase is a boy. You know, what? the little one, the little, she's five and Chase is Wait, that, how That's Chase? Journey. Oh, Jayla is older. J yeah, J J Jayla is older. So you have three. No, I have two. He well, who is Journey? Him. Journey is my niece. Uh, oh, your niece. Yeah. Okay. He only plants. But 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 per the per the market I, research thing through pay for say. I don't live in a fantasy world. <laughs> I have two yeah. children. I have two children, and then and one of my children for the study that I'm doing next week has a bed wetting problem. Oh, oh my God. that check is four hundred dollars. Four hundred. Yep. American. What are we talking about? I pay, for your say, pay for your say. So I've been telling my people about pay for your say. I need to get a, wet, a big wedding child. Yes, indeed. You need to sign up for pay for your say. What is, what are you talking about? Okay, it's market research. This to it's market know. research. Okay. I That's used something. to do them where I went and get one for a cigar and you have to smoke it. And I don't smoke. And you know, because a girl worked for me and she was giving us Can research. You put something else in the cigar? <laughs> well, you had to describe it. For $250, I was smoking a cigar. I know, that's right. That's what I'm trying to tell you. And so I just signed up for it. So, um, yeah, so that's that. But don't forget, pay for, it's scrolling at the bottom. The promo code in soon. Paid for your say. www.paidforyoursay.com. The promo code is Craig100. And then you get all your information on how, and then you start getting your emails from the different market research companies and what they're looking. I mean, because there's all kinds of stuff. They could be doing it on appliances. Um, your snacks that you buy, like whatever, it's just a restaurant. Right. How you answer the questions? Yeah. Before the survey, so I'm like, Craig, sometimes you have to exaggerate. If I smoke. Oh, I see. I yeah. You okay. Just, you now just embellish a little bit. Right. Yeah. 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 They're looking for certain certain people. Right. Certain demographic. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Where's the bookshelf? Yeah, that bookshelf was gonna be here last week. Well, Elliot and I talked about it, that. It ain't in there yet. Mm -hmm. Look at him. Look, Scott. Look at him. Look at him. <laughs> Look at him. Messy party of one. Have a seat. Messy <laughs> party of one. Why is this still he's he's um uh, staining it. He tell me he has. Oh to my God. Tell me your picture. He's how he's been staining it for a while, right? Months. Can we get a picture, please? See, this is why you don't tell certain people certain things. I just want a picture. But wait, but I, I have a question. I'm being serious. Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not even being mm -hmm. shady or mm -hmm. funny. Mm -hmm. Did you pay him full in full? No, bitch, no. <laughs> okay, I'm just saying, I don't sure. pay nobody in full, but I get all of the. But, so you he, he you have a balance due when he delivers. Correct. All right, I'm just making sure. And y'all can put something on that too. Right? <laughs> on <Something's> my birthday. <laughs> but but no, I sent the Duzel too, and this is why I say to people all the time: if you have PayPal, I don't have PayPal. Pay people through PayPal because you can always pull your money back if so, they if they nut up. I got really? a thing yes, I've been telling Carlton now all the time. Pay them through PayPal because he has PayPal. Oh, that's I got a thing yeah. from Venmo from Venmo about them updating their policies. Did you know they're owned by PayPal now? Venmo? Yeah. I didn't know that. I stopped fooling with them years ago. Now, let me tell you why I stopped fooling with them. I had gotten bamboozled <laughs> into sending somebody some money through there. I thought I was sending it to one person. And it ended Somewhere up being said something about PayPal. Oh, and it ended up being an imposter. Mm. And I had sent two hundred and fifty dollars through there, and so I reached out to Venmo and was like, "Hey, you know, this person pretended to be somebody else. I need y'all to run me my two fifty back." And they're gonna say, "Oh, well, you know, once it's done, it's done. We can't do anything about it." Oh, okay. I called my bank. Hey, how y'all doing? Yeah, uh, I just sent some money through Venmo, and it was the wrong person. They just goofed, they just goofed me out of my money. And when I tell you my bank reached in there and pulled that money back from Venmo, 
I got a negative two hundred fifty dollar balance over that Venmo to this day. So it must have been somebody gay on the phone too that they knew what goop meant. <laughs> <laughs> and so when I tell you, when I tell you they sent me my money back and Venmo has been emailing me ever since, I'm like, oh, we need to get that two. No, nah, nah. bitch, you should have got it from that exactly. motherfucker that stole it from me. <laughs> And it's the same thing with Zell. That's why when you and when Zell, you check because that's they right. tell you once it's Zell, you yeah. get the back. All right, Tranquil. Tranquil said, I am enjoying Book of Jewels. <laughs> uh, Elliot has Book of Jewels, but he never read it. Okay. <laughs> Elliot was only a fan of uh, my first book because, see, by the time I wrote I this read book, the first two, I have read some of Book of Jewels. By the time, by the time I put out my second book, you all know I wrote that. Um was I living at? No, I was living at your house. No, no, no. Elliot kept the second book in mind. I wrote the second book yeah. at your house. And I recorded I the, the audio book. version for Words Never Spoken at his house. But I wrote the second book. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So Elliot has only read my first book. I read the second he book. He ain't read the second You know how it is when the person know you in real life. It's almost like, well, I ain't got to buy him and read his books no more. You know, it's like he, he too familiar now. He too familiar. I read the damn second book. I was there as you was birthing the We book. know all these but stories. Anyway. You don't know all these stories. Yes, we do. I got a story right now I want to tell you. Ready? I don't know about the jungle then. I read that book. Oh. <laughs> well, he, well, he didn't rave about my second book like he read about my first book. And the child and it was running in the wheelchair and the gross child knows the song. <laughs> but, but, see, but, here, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. Because he knew me when right. I wrote the second book, it's like he wasn't as invested. <laughs> But see, he didn't know me when I put the first book out. He, oh, you didn't know look, me look. when you wrote the first book. When I, when I wrote the first book, he bought, I don't know how many copies of that first book. And he was just mailing them out to people. But that second book, he bought his own copy. And that was it. <laughs> now, that didn't mean that it wasn't good, because it was good. But it's just that when people know you, it's just like, oh, yeah, that's just his book. <laughs> you know how the kids do. <laughs> Right, right, right. Dia said, right, he could be lying on your E True Hollywood story saying he read them all. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know how it goes. Uh, but he sit by the pool with sunglasses and the captain. <laughs> Come on, captain. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. But listen, um, Yes, please hit the like button on the video. Somebody said, well, I, I actually see 309 people watching in the middle of the work day. Mm. Please hit the like button. Please hit the like button. But though, I do have a story. Oh, you do? Yes. About? I have a story about a time when I was dating this young fella from the Bahamas. <laughs> Jesus. I was dating this little tenderoni oh, from the Bahamas. Do we and, know this person? No, I don't think you do. But what? What? How, they talking about they off? Oh, I'm on break. Oh, everybody on break. <laughs> Somebody else said, "Oh, I work nights." Oh, okay. So all y'all got excuses. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. But uh, I, I work, was. I work nights too. I don't get paid for it. <laughs> somebody said. Somebody said. I, I am watching from my desk. Somebody else said, "I'm working and typing." So I was talking to a friend of mine, and I'm not going to say his name because y'all have seen him on Patreon, and y'all know who it is. And so um, no, they come in here loud all the time. Oh, 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 oh okay. <laughs> so he was like, oh, yeah, you know, I used to work at um, we were passing it. He was like, I used to work at this hotel right here. I said, oh, really? I said, oh, okay, I didn't know that. And he said, yeah, I used to work, at, work, work there when I first got here. So he's telling me a story. He said, oh, Craig, it was, this, it was this dude that worked there. Let me preface it by saying this. You know how, okay, what's the, what's the thing that people usually say about dating a flight attendant? They're whores. I what, didn't say that. What, what did they say? No, they're whores. So there, there's this, there's this, people kind of think that they, that flight attendants are whores, right? Because y'all fly from city to city and you got dates in all these other cities. No, and I'm saying that because they, they do the same thing with consultants because we travel and they think that you're in a different city. And Elliot is a doing, consultant. That you're doing the same thing. And people will quickly say, oh, you're a flight attendant because when you say you travel for a living. And they'll say, oh, you date somebody in every city, so you can't be working. 
Shabbat. And see, and if you're gay, they, they suspect that you're on Grinder or Jack yeah, or something yeah, like true. that in every city that you go to. So, but I'm here to tell you that if you're going to be concerned about flight attendants, you need to be concerned about these people that work at these hotels, too. So, he, <laughs> oh front God. desk. <laughs> they know what rooms are available on any given night. Yeah, and like, I have to talk about my hotel phone. I've been there. Listen, and then and then somebody might come on off the street and you lock eyes oh with him and then God. and you go on a tour. Listen. So he was telling me that he used to work at the hotel. He not just here, but also in another state. And he was like, Oh yeah, you know, I've hooked up before while on the job. <laughs> you just have a conversation about the, the hooking side. up at work, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, that's a little different. That's a perfect strength. Well, it is a hookup. Well, what's the ground. difference when y'all getting on grinder and Jack? He's Are we all perfect strangers? What's the difference? Well, now, if, you're, if you're dating somebody, you have a little rendezvous at the job. You ain't doing it the first time you meet them at work. Like we're both new hires. No, so no, no, no. no. I'm talking about a guest from off the street. That's what I'm saying. That's a little different. That's a little risky. Well, but wait. Now, well, what's the difference? Not, let's not pretend like we, uh, we weren't in the clubs getting numbers going home. Mm -hmm. I, was a, the, I was a saint. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Shut it up. She's sitting over there with the mobile apps on her phone right now. <laughs> she's sitting over here with the mobile. Uh, you know what it is? She got this little sling on her arm, and so now she's feeling. Slide <laughs> on, Scott. She got this little sling on her arm, so now she's feeling like she. Um, <laughs> Polly perfect. Mm -hmm. I am. I did not do that. Now I'm serious. That club thing, because I always had the fear. Oh okay, well, we all we all had like my children you going home with and somebody jump out the closet. Because I used to tell my friends, Jared, you're gonna be on table for work because he went he met a mortician. Okay, so you so, so, so you didn't so you never had a one night. I know some I know some of the straight right. folks have had one night stands. You yeah. go to the club and then you know you feeling a little something and then you go on. I never house. had a one night stand. Okay, so you know ever. He's had a one night from no club. Oh, now. okay. Be ye specific. Because the yeah, advice is specific. <laughs> Communication is our partner. Clarity is our partner. So you've never met anybody from the club and gone home. Yeah. Okay. But you've got on No, no, no. Not from the house, from a house party. My first one was from a gavel. What the hell is the difference between the club and the house party? See, now, now, now he's like, more comfortable. Oh, so, so he's hooked up from a house party, just not from Why? The club. Because you knew the. the well, it was, a, it was a friend of somebody. I knew the host and it was a friend of his. <laughs> it's like we can't we can it's like we can't get him to be completely honest. <laughs> uh, I was honest. Yeah. It's like, it, no, it's that, like that's that an is apple. No, no there's not. Is that's apples and apples. No, it's not. correct. That was the only difference is I paid to get in that club. Right. Right. No. No. Look, look, the way the gays act now, <laughs> look, the way the gays act now, you have to pay to get into these house gatherings sometimes. <laughs> no, that is not true. When you're going to a house party, it's people, you're there because of a mutual friend. And if somebody introduces you to that mutual friend, it's not going to a club where all y'all are Wait, screaming. but did, did you get a certificate that said that this yes, person is crazy yes, or a murderer? I mean, for real. <laughs> it was a little different. You ain't got to slam down the Because you. <laughs> you're still talking honey crisp apples versus red, red delicious. delicious. Okay, they have apples. No, they're not. Yes, it is. I, I, I disagree. <laughs> Clearly, Kim, you disagree. kills me. <laughs> and see, this is why y'all think I'm so risky because he sits over here trying to act like he's so prim and proper. <laughs> well, you are risky. I, I am not. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> get my clothes up, buttoned up, honey. <laughs> that's all that's buttoned up. <laughs> so my friend and I, we were driving around the other day, and he was just like, yeah, you know, when I live in this other state, I don't want to get too many details. He was like, yeah, one day, you know, because um, the hotel that he worked for was connected to the mall. And... <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, um, yeah, man, this dude, he said, you know, he was staying in the hotel. I guess it was like one of those things where he had just transferred for the job and he hadn't transitioned to his own place yet. So he was staying in the hotel. And he was like, um, I had dude come on over to my room and we got it in. He said, in fact, we met, he said, we fucked around a few times. But then when we passed the hotel right here downtown, he said, you know, I used to work in this hotel. I said, no, there was a coworker of his who had a boyfriend mm -hmm. and this hotel had just, just opened up. And so, you know, the staff had to go into each room and they had to set up the mini bar. Mm -hmm. They had to put the sheets on the bed, you know, all the stuff that you got to do. And so he said the two of them were in the room. Now, mind you, this boy had a boyfriend. They was this the boy from the Bahamas? That you, like, no, no, I'm gonna, that's my story. I'm going to okay. get to my story. <laughs> so my friend was in the room, 
And this dude that worked with him was like, he said he went over to the door and just locked the door. He said, drop them pants. Ooh. And started sucking his dick on the clock in the room. And the boy who was sucking the dick had a boyfriend at home. I'm a little turned on by that, I have to say. Listen, <laughs> you and me both. <laughs> I'm a little turned off by that. Now, I'm not saying I would do it. <laughs> I, but, yeah, me neither. But, but I'm a little but, turned off. I'm a million dollars. Come on. Yeah. But, but, but they work together. OK, it, but how long is they been working together? It's I don't know how long they been working together. But the thing is, if somebody locked the door and said, grab your pants and right. suck that dick. Right. I'm a little turned off by that. I hope I might drop my pants. I might drop my pants. But you got to be attracted to it. Because you've been there with a Not scene. necessarily. <laughs> Oh my you God! My, God. Man, I got to be attracted to it. Listen, no. he said, "Drop them drawers in the pants," and he did. Okay. Look at her moving her shoulders. Look, look. Right now, my story is is, is is as follows. I was dating this guy from the Bahamas, and he worked at the Ritz Carlton. I'm gonna go ahead and tell y'all. And so um, he he's not there anymore. <laughs> And baby, he would call me sometime and be like, hey, what you doing? I'd be like, nothing, you know, whatever. He was like, um, come on down to the hotel. Come spend the night at the hotel. Because he worked overnight. And so he was Where were night. you living? I was living over there on 26th Street, where, where we live. I used to live right there. That's where I was living when this happened. And so. Um, oh, wait, I'm sorry. Ritz Carlton in the I'm thinking, the Ritz Carlton I'm thinking, downtown. I'm thinking the Ritz Carlton in the Bahamas. My, no, no, no. <laughs> he's, no. <laughs> No, no, no. Why are you to the Bahamas? No, he wasn't flying me to the Bahamas. <laughs> not on that overnight shit. Overnight. <laughs> so um, he was like, come on down to the hotel, you know, come spend the night. And I'm like, okay. And so I packed my little overnight bag and I run on down to the hotel. And so I, he said, just come to the front desk. And so he'd be at the front desk and he would slide. He, would ask, he was like, good evening, sir. How are you? And he would slip my Was little, somebody else there? Bitch, yeah. And he had to do was put it in as a comp room. Yeah, he would he was he would slip my little key card on the counter and slide it on over to me. And I just that man justify why he's in that room if, if the room is not out of order. If the room is out of order, nobody should be in the room. So if you checked into the room, I know. right? If you checked into the room after we had rolled around, the sheets may have been a little unsettled. Oh my god! No, I'm just kidding. So I'm, just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. He, he would have the room cleaned after that. But anyway, so <laughs> I, he would slide my little key card over to the thing. And uh, I would, he, and I would go up to the room, and then shortly thereafter he'd come up with. Um, was he on his break? Well, since it was overnight, oh. he he could just kind of yeah, you know. Yeah. Right. Mm. And so uh, so he wouldn't necessarily on a break. He would send me like uh, chocolate covered strawberries, and then um, he would send a bottle of champagne up there, and I would be up there, you know, watching TV or whatever. Luxuriating, luxuriating at the at the Ritz Carlton. <laughs> yeah, couldn't afford nothing in there. Okay. <laughs> So I would, you know, because he was working at night, sometimes it would be busy. I would sometimes fall asleep. You know what I'm saying? Because he'd work, he'd be like, I'll be up. Or he'll call the room, like, hey, I ain't to get you. He said, I, I just got a little busy. I'm going to come up there when I get a minute. Baby, one night I had slipped into a coma. I was so sleepy. <laughs> when I woke up, he was straddled and oh riding my, my. Oh, my God. Not today. Are you for real? Baby! When I say that's one way to wake up. So undoubtedly, he was not a proficient night auditor, or there were other night audit staff. Oh my! Like, what? Or he was I neglecting his work to I come work. Missing the point. Of the story. He, he, he was neglecting the rich Carlton work to come work. I mean, what? No. Why are you worried no, about Rich Carlton's work? On. That's what I want. <laughs> Somebody had to be at that desk. Why? Well, listen, it I don't know who was at the uh, hotel. That desk is not supposed to be. I don't know who was at the desk, but I can tell you who was straddled on top of me. <laughs> and then <laughs> somebody was at that desk. Did it be that comfortable? Because that's not a quick. That's not a quick fifteen minutes. No, it was not. What well, maybe it was a quick fifteen. Minutes. No, it wasn't. And I, had, I, had, I had put in all the work that day. When I, when I woke up and came to. You came yeah, too. Geez. I came too. <laughs> <laughs> and look, and then the next day. I would go down to their breakfast buffet because they had a, yeah, he would have me, their breakfast buffet was like $40. This is back in the early, right. I ain't going to tell you, I was trying to set you up with comp passes and everything. Sure did. And look, when Gladys used to come down, he used to give me passes for her to go to breakfast. <laughs> she come down, well, we going to the Ritz Carlton, girl, you ain't paying for that. <laughs> she was like, give me a, a certificate for the Ritz Carlton. <laughs> Baby. 
But you gotta watch out for them hotel workers. Now listen, if you dating somebody that's what happened to him? He working at another hotel now. <laughs> And they well, have you ever thought that maybe there were other participants or did that matter? If he did it with you, Oh, that's a really good question. Oh, my God. That's a really good question. I didn't say he was my man. <laughs> <laughs> so you were aware of the fact that that was happening more than once. Listen, if he took the chance with me, I'm sure it probably wasn't the first time he had done I'm it. I'm sure he was a repeat offender. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> okay. The things people do. Yeah, listen. So on my list, I can't date anybody work for a hotel. No, just I'm just, I'm just, I'm just kidding. Oh my goodness! <laughs> oh my god! I still can't get over this whole thing with the drop your drawers and lock the door. Come on! You ain't never had no. Oh, you know what? She likes massage therapy, <laughs> so she likes those massages that have like a happy ending. No, I do not. But wait, or or you know, based on his cheerleading story, he likes to straddle, like you know. Madison, FaceTime video. What, look at Who is that? Who's Madison? Madison, T.S. Madison. <laughs> I'm on my live. Okay, yeah, so definitely be careful, careful. Text me. No, I need to know, after it, after it transpires, what is the time frame before the first... Uh, Deposit? Reach out, before the first reach out to do the first thing. Oh, I'm gonna have to call you back. Okay. All right. Um, but no. So wait, what were we saying? What were we saying? No, I'm just whole thing about. Oh, he. Oh, I was saying that Elliot likes. You know, remember the story about the cheerleading when he liked the. He had to straddle the man. Guy, <laughs> <laughs> I take precautions and I take my time. I mean, that to me was just a little too forward for me. What well, was too forward? If somebody in the if, no, we're working. But you just straddled the man. That was an experiment. That's different. Well, he might have been an experiment no. with the live. Did we tell that story on the live or was that on Patreon? That, that was on the live. Because my thing is this. I've been in a hotel where it was opening and you and you got all these new people and we did exactly what you're saying. We were sitting at the front desk and you were going to help people. But you're just meeting these people. I didn't say, I, listen, listen, I didn't say how long they knew each other right. and all that. You didn't know that man that you went to the, that you went home with from that gathering. And quite honestly, even if I did, just for those six hours we was at that gathering, we got to know a lot about each other. <laughs> <laughs> so you think you knew this man well enough because y'all had been at the some? It was not going to the club and you know making eyes. Then we go in the bathroom and all that other shady stuff. No, I have dignity. Did you say dignity? Dignity. Dick. She said dick. <laughs> dick. Dick. Dignity. Dignity. I'm not going to be assaulted over here. You are, you are a mess. You are a mess. <laughs> I'm like, I'm just total mud. No, I'm not. I just was asking. A, it was a point of clarification. Uh-huh. <laughs> Scott Thomas, that kind of turns him on. Really? That turned me on too when he told me that story. It turned me on. Honestly, God, that turned me on. So what if the child was a Steve? What's that mean? What he a beast spell backwards. Right. A beast. A beast. Spell backwards. Steve. Everybody needs love. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's let's jump to that topic. How do you feel about doing the welfare project? That's what I call them. You know, we all have our, you know, our contribution. Welfare project? That's what I call it. What you mean? Like, when, like you, when you deal with somebody that you're really not That's really below your standards. I would say that. Them. I just say you're not physically or emotionally Oh, but you're going to call them welfare project. <laughs> <laughs> your community service. Like no, I don't have no community service set. Is that what you're It's the same thing. No, it is not. I just said you're not attracted to them. Oh, I don't do that. It, it, well, it depends, depends on what's going on inside of me. Because I can close my it, uh, my oh. eyes and a mouth is a mouth. I mean, <laughs> for real. <laughs> That's what I said. Because I was saying you got to be attracted to them. And Scott just said, well, everybody needs love. I, I mean, for real. <laughs> you don't move so bad. <laughs> I, I, well, I, well, you know, I've done my community <laughs> service, too. Because when I first moved here. Oh, you have a community, community service sex project. <laughs> I've had community sex. And it wasn't instantly, immediately. It was a person who, you know, you went out. It's like you said, you went out on a date and you was just like. No, I'm not dating. No, I'm not dating. No. <laughs> when a big <laughs> player went out on a date. No, we're not going out on a date. No, I'm just saying. Because if I run situation. into one of y'all shady bitches and I'm with a beast, like, I, I'll never live that down. Somebody <laughs> said, yes, Scott. 
<laughs> Never live it down. Right, yes, you will. No, I wouldn't. He better bring nobody ugly around me. <laughs> now, I may not say it in front of them. Right, but I'm rest right. assured, when he gets to my house, who the fuck was that? With you? <laughs> what was that monster you had on your couch today? <laughs> but wait a minute. Uh, so, wait a minute. You had some community service in? I did community service. When I first moved here, I wait, was Wait, you did community services in work or you did community service sex? <laughs> yes. So, you didn't think he was attractive? No. So well, then what was. But what was going through? What was going on with you? <laughs> Jay was sexy, but he wasn't the best looking thing. Was so, the sex good? Yeah. And that's what I meant by uh -huh. everybody needs love. So I'm not like. Jay, you had to look away. Well, you know. There you go. Lay on your stomach and bite the pillow and moan at the same time. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's that, very that body was a 10. That face was a negative two. But the personality eye. was a six. Right. So you had to average it all out. Did y'all mess around more than one? Are you asking me? Or him? Not him. Oh. Did y'all mess around more than one? I would say about five times. <laughs> you know, the mornings when you did them, them late Great, weeks, you never them late with somebody you're not when that, when that urge hits, things and, happen. And then you dial in the numbers. You know, once upon a time, there was a boy named Craig. <laughs> <laughs> and like when you said uh it depends on where you are and what you're going yeah, through yeah, yeah. I, I connected to that because yeah. there was a time where i was um it was during my depression period right and i did hook up with um this guy and i stopped right in the middle of sex and i was just like oh i'm not i don't want to do this anymore. i don't want to do this no more right and i know he was looking at me like what the fuck is wrong right. yeah, yeah because I, it, something just came over me in that moment it was just like craig if you were really in your right mind yeah, you, you wouldn't have even paid this That's guy right. any attention. So yeah, yeah. I had to like dial back, and I kind of escorted him to the door. I had a moment like that in Chicago. So after I had my suicide attempt, I packed up my whole life here. And you took them too fast with that. Oh, what? What did I say? When you said my suicide attempt, they went, "Wait a minute, what?" I know the question. I know the uh, comments uh, are coming, but go ahead. Well, uh, so I had a suicide attempt back in two thousand and seven. And then shortly thereafter, I packed up my whole life in Atlanta and I moved to Chicago to live with my cousin who basically was divorced and lived by himself in this huge apartment. And I had the whole apartment to myself. Mm -hmm. So when I moved to Chicago, because it was different for me, like being in Atlanta, every I know a lot of people. Yeah. A lot of people know me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for me writing for a magazine, all that kind of stuff. Scott used to write for, you know, let me say which one? Yeah. Then. Scott used to write for Click Magazine. The gays know what Click is, some of y'all. But go ahead. Um, so being in a new city, I decided I was going to do all the things I wanted to, never did, but always wanted to do. Mm. <laughs> it was going to be a little slut. Uh, correct. Basically. Make, make it plain, make it simple. Right. I That's would, what we tried to get you to do. I'm <laughs> always, <laughs> see, you see how I'm shifting back? Right. I, I'm always plain and simple. Mm -hmm. I'm to that mm -hmm. I went to like, I didn't go to sex parties, but I went to naked parties. And um, I what's never, the difference? Well, they weren't. So you have to you have to give your all your clothes away because you don't. They're not necessarily having sex. Wait, like wait, it's wait, a bar. Are they playing cards? You give away all your they're, clothes. It's a it's a club. So you it's clothing. It's clothing it's a, optional. No, it's not clothing optional. You have, you to, have to give your clothes, clothes away. And you and you're standing around at a club naked. Uh -huh. Are there rooms where people are doing other things? They ain't even they rooms. Do. Like if you're choosing to participate, there's stuff going on behind you. Yeah, but there are people just standing at the bar socializing, like me, naked. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. what year was that? <laughs> Two thousand seven. Oh, and this was in Chicago. In Chicago. Oh. Oh. So look, was this North Side, South Side, Boys Town? This this event is called Bare Naked, and it was at a club. It's a private event at a club on the North Side okay. at the at the Anvil. Anvil. What did he say? AKA the den. <laughs> That's the anvil. Here's the den. Oh, well, yeah. So look. Oh, have you been, wait, wait, wait. Have you no, been no, out? No, 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 no. Have you been to I've the den? I know a lot of people who've gone to give me. No, no, no. The question was, have you been to the den? The only place I've ever been before I moved here, I went to Flex. Huh? And I didn't know what it was. And got in there. Yes, and, yeah, Amelia no, no, no. Bedelia. Amelia, Amelia Bedelia <laughs> goes to the uh, bathhouse. Didn't you know, you don't know. Honestly, and I got in and I was like, what are these little rooms for? Because you <laughs> what, what, what are these little rooms for? <laughs> <laughs> what are these little rooms for? Story time. That's because what you didn't for. have to. This was in 1996. You didn't have to take out the clothes. And I went with friends and I'm like, 
this it was it was advertised as a men's social club. Oh, and I'm like, is that is that what they were called? That's what they called. They still call Flex a men's social club. That's a bad thing. <laughs> Look, so somebody uh, said, how did you get an invite to what to the uh, bare naked? Oh, they had a website, and I I stumbled on. I don't even remember how stumbled. I stumbled onto the website. Just like right. you stumbled in on the website. Right. Right. Now, now, I was flex with some friends, and I was just like, "Well, I didn't. I stumbled on. It might have been because I was on Adam for Adam. Okay. I mean, it could have been. It could have been a number of reasons. Because I, when I say I was like doing things I'd never done, I was doing lots of things I'd never oh. done. Oh, until that you can share. until I went to a party. And somebody came to me and said, I saw you at Aren't You Scott and used to write for Click Magazine. Ah! <laughs> I was down. Just and I was down. like, um, yo. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that's how Diane Carroll said it on uh, a different one. Just die, just die. I was I like, said, no, wrong Scott. Well, I couldn't say no because um, his picture was in the magazine. I, my picture was in the magazine, and Thomas, Thomas yeah, you took me to this party. <laughs> and I was like, and he's standing right there. Oh, so Thomas was there as well. This was, it, wasn't, it was like a... Oh, this was a different one. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. It wasn't very naked. Oh, okay. no, 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 no. Oh. So, yeah. so you had said, Doctor, you had said some things. <laughs> you had said there were some things that you were really getting into. Is there anything that you could share with Remember us here? I'm, I'm not finished with the bare naked. So, <laughs> Barbara Walters, I need you to work on your interview style. <laughs> Go ahead. So, it, look, so, look, basically, the same thing that you were dealing with, I was still in a state of depression, mm -hmm. and I was trying to figure out how to get myself out, out of, of this it. hole. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and as a result, I was trying things that I'd never really done before. Mm -hmm. I'd never... I'd never been to a bathhouse. Yeah. I still haven't. Like I've never been, I've never been to a sex party. I've never done any of that kind of stuff. Right. I when I was in Chicago, I had a threesome. I went to that bare naked thing. I you know, I did I was experimenting. How do you enjoy it? Um, I had fun. Now I was the guest star. Wait a minute. Let me give you something else to drink. Hold on. Jenna Jameson is in the room. Now she said she was the guest star. Right. Now, right. question, at this function, the bare naked one. Yeah. What, did you find somebody that you know? I, so, what, I'm already, like, dealing with the fact that I'm naked, and I don't really have body issues because I've been to new beaches, but the fact that I'm in a bar and people are naked and they're having sex behind me and people are trying to- All in one open room. Yes, and I, so I'm on, I'm on sensory overload. She collecting data. Like I'm trying to process too much. So I could not really get comfortable in right. my situation. What was the interest fee? Uh, $15, I think. I'm thinking about financial sign. But go on. But right, Let, but no, seriously, no judgment guys, because here's the thing, to your point, that was how we kind of handled our depression, mm -hmm. which was kind of like through sex. But there are people who use drugs. There are people who alcohol. use food, alcohol, shopping, spending okay. money. You know what I mean? All kinds of things. So we're sharing this not because we're endorsing, or absolutely, we, or not because we're suggesting, <laughs> and, like, we're, and we're not convinced you do it. Who made those two? Find you a therapist. And by the way, I have a therapist. Right, right, right. Get you a therapist and try to do it in a more healthy way. Yeah. But we're not suggesting that you go and do one night stands and all this other stuff. But I don't want to condone people either because I have no room to judge anybody for what they Right, right, right. Because yeah. I was young, new in Atlanta, and I did some things. I'm like, Scott, oh, we know. I did some things <laughs> that were a little unconventional because I came from Memphis where people were very closeted. Sure. People were very, yeah. you know, Bible Belt. They didn't do certain things in the street. Then I come here, children follow you down the street. What are some of the things that you did? <laughs> well, I'll be honest, I was going to Brock. <laughs> you, you, you ain't you ain't going to a different key. I'm not going to Blockbuster. Blockbuster video. Blockbuster video. video to take back a movie. For the young people, this is before Netflix. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> there was Blockbuster video. You were going to a video store and they had VHS tapes but all around the store. But Netflix was around. Remember they would mail Net you. Net Net Netflix <laughs> took the <laughs> rest of out of business. Out of business. Because at the, at the beginning of Netflix, you could only rent three DVDs at a time initially. Yeah, a month. Then they, yeah, and then they expanded it where you could do like Spain. unlimited. Yeah, and they would mail them to you. But go and you watch it on your DVD player. I was returning a video. It was a Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening. Returning a video, and you know you come to a stoplight, and you know somebody locks eyes, and I'm you know you smile. I'm trying to see how this is any different from hooking up in the hotel. But go ahead, you're in a traffic light. You're, you're in a traffic light. First of all, I did hook up. Go ahead, you're at the traffic light. And what it's happened? Red Delicious and Fuji now. <laughs> <laughs> the person followed me to Blockbuster. 
Mm -hmm. I get out of my car to go return the videotape. I Were you aware him. that he was following? No, because I saw him at the red light and then out of sight, out of mind, because I turned and my focus was getting the movie back before midnight, before you know, before they charged you for the next charge. day. So wait a minute, when you looked over, did you know he was one of the gays? <laughs> oh, but when I turned around and he said what he said, I knew he was one of something. Well, what did he say? What did he say? What he said was, mm, damn, you sexy. <laughs> Child, I had a white t-shirt on with, I had way some barbecue sauce because we had barbecue for dinner. You didn't went out he the house. He wasn't looking at that. Right, right. You, you, <laughs> right, you, you right. didn't go out the house looking busted. You, went out, you didn't went out the house with barbecue sauce drizzled down your brows. <laughs> Blouse. <laughs> <laughs> Blouse. And this child was a student at Morehouse. Oh, oh he was they notorious over there at Morehouse. If I knew then what I know now, I would have went to Morehouse. Student at Morehouse, gay, stood on Block Post Park Lot for I know 45 minutes talking. I'm like, over at West End? That's no, no, no. I was in Smyrna on Car Park. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. And the thing of it was, it was shocking to me because I had moved from a city that was very closeted yeah. to hear the people. So for them to like, come out. It was very vocal, very mm -hmm. front, and followed me to. A location and persisted to have a conversation. We exchanged phone numbers, had our little rendezvous for about three months. What does a rendezvous entail? Child, that included a little snack here, a little dinner there. Wait a, a minute. Extra snack over here, a little, you know, wine and cheese at the house, another snack this over snack, here. This snack a euphemism? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Are you talking about a real snack? That is a euphemism. You're, talking about a, you're not talking about a real snack. No, I'm talking about a real snack. Oh. He was young and youthful, and I'm yeah. At that time, I was twenty six. So y'all fucked. So you were young and youthful. <laughs> yeah, I, but I was still older. Right. He was he was twenty. Listen, I, listen. My th my philosophy has been this for a long time: old enough to pee, old enough for me. Okay. Now I don't mean underage. <laughs> now I ain't no pedophile. I don't like that. Old, I don't old like enough that. to pee. You over there at the college? Oh, okay, come on over here. Let me show you something. <laughs> come on over here. Let me come on over here. Let me show you something. No. You remember we went to that school with Pierre and them kids playing basketball? We remember that we went to the movies. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the school where he was teaching. At that school. At high school. Them children had mustaches. And I can yeah. those high school students. It's one of my fears. Like, because kids today look so old. Listen, and if you've ever been with one of them young ones, they of age, but they're young. They got the biggest damn dicks you've ever seen in your and life. just stinky. I think it's in the similar. <laughs> it's in the water. Something like these young girls are getting development at 12 and 10. I told and they're you. going through puberty. And I'm like, what is going on? Let me clarify this again. And I don't mean underage, like under 21. I'm saying like 23, 24, 25. Like them kids, they built like grown men. Yeah. There was a guy, there was a white guy on the treadmill at the gym yesterday. And I was like, damn. Like, I mean, his ass. I was like, what the? Yeah. Now I want to go back to this bare naked. Mm -hmm. Oh okay. my God. <laughs> Connie Chung is going to get her questions. I go ahead. Send, would you like for me to send you the website? Yeah. Is it still in production? Yeah. Even if you have him flying to they Chicago. They still have parties, I believe. But what is the emphasis of the whole gathering? It's to just socialize and do other things as well? Other I, things. I, <laughs> it, it is it's for people that like nudity, okay. right? But um, and that are having sex in a public place. I mean, it's, I public think it appeals. Sex. I yeah. think it appeals to exhibitionists. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It appeals to people that like public sex or whatever. Mm -hmm. It also appeals to nudism, uh -huh. and it also appeals to people that are, are considered bears. I don't think I'm a bear, oh, but bears. Like, yeah. yeah, I told y'all what a bear is. See, I, I, I know that. That's I like. I like hearing so that meant so you had did you have to be a no, bear? You don't have to be. I'm so a bear. I, I shared this with you guys before, but a bear is a guy as a bigger guy that's hairy. Yeah, there's that's, a lot of like there's a bear, there's an otter, there's a cub. There's, there's a, a cub. What is an otter? I've I, seen I, I never heard of an otter. otter. Oh, I've seen that word otter. I'm like, what is an otter? But these are words that typically white gays use. Yeah, these yeah. aren't necessarily words yeah, that black gays. But um, okay. and then let me let me make it plain because I'm sure some of y'all probably looking like what having sex. I'm sure some of y'all been to hedonism. Uh, it's the same thing. We go to the It's heterosexual sex in, yeah. he, in, in Jamaica and right. hedonism. And I remember why are people going there. And right. it's usually heterosexual people that get down there, and get the swinging. They've been them swinger parties. Get the What's on. the place here? Trap trapeze. Uh huh. Look there. at you knowing trapeze. Mm. Um, okay, so an otter is a bit like a bear, but they're just smaller in stature. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. So they're hairy and stuff, but, but they're, they're hairy small. too. Yeah, yeah. Did they have to be thick? No. Okay. Mm. 
there was something, there was a question out here, something was on the table, and I wanted to, um, oh, somebody said, I'm a hedonism veteran. <laughs> Mm, Jesus. Right here. Mm. Clay, okay, here it is. D. Willis. He said it. He said Otter is hairy, small built guy. Mm. Um, okay. So back to this um this little Morehouse boy. <laughs> no, 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 I'm back. <laughs> um, how long did you all mess around? About three months. Wow, that's a long time. And day. you know what? And what because they, they were going back home for the summer. Do you still know him? Child, when they went home for the summer, I was in, you know, like you said, I was in season. I was 26 and young. Child, he was just. You were in season. He was a person on the camera. Right. Because I always said, baby, I'm always in season. Winter, I mean, spring, spring, summer, or fall. Right. I've been seen. Now, that was over 20 times. Loud. 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 Yeah, I was 26. Listen, I, no shades to the Morehouse boys, but listen, y'all be doing some things over there. <laughs> And he had no shame because he had on his Morehouse shirt and was just like, and it, it took me back because I'm coming from Memphis, very reserved, very mm -hmm. cogent church. And yeah. nobody comes up to you and follow you and say what they got to say. And, and it kept happening. Yeah. Went to the gas station on, on my way to Bell Bottoms and, and when it used to be oh, in, wow. in Buckhead. Yeah. I remember Bell Bottoms. The gas station. The guy said, Where are you going? <clears throat> Bell Bottoms, where I'm going with you. What? <laughs> Bell Bottoms was an 80s club, it was a straight club. In Alternative. I didn't think them girls were straight. I picked well, it was more. it wasn't necessarily no. a gay club. I picked Anybody more me and Bell Bottoms than I did yeah. at the gay club. Black, white, gay, straight, whatever. Like club anytime was like that too. Yeah, Remember and they years? played eighties music, eighties and nineties and seventies and seventies, right? And what was the one they used to have on Tuesday nights that where the strippers were and it was a bunch of women? Got in that one with some friends. It was Atlanta something, and it was in Buckhead where they would have strippers oh, on doing Atlanta those. nights. Atlanta nights. <laughs> Went in there with some friends. From work, baby. They was the, it was the strippers, and most it was a straight situation. I said, mm -hmm. "Why am I going with y'all? A bunch of men gonna be stripping, a bunch of women. It was men and women. I got three phone numbers before I left there, and I'm like, this is what they do. This undercover sliding that's how, numbers. That's and, how there's a place on Ponce that sells chicken wings. It's like that there too. <laughs> <laughs> So you didn't tell me you going in to buy some chicken wings. What you come out You know what I'm talking about. No, I don't know. Well, Ponce. Oh, Dugan's. Uh, huh. <laughs> Ladies, if you got a man that's going down there to do this, you better tailgate <laughs> and see if he actually going down there to watch the game. Because that is definitely a, a DL hookup. Yes. That's been that way for since Forever. I Forever. Yes. Mm. But going back to this whole community service, <laughs> have you done community service in the sense of? Yeah, I said I have. He said he hasn't. Are you sure? Well, I think mine was slightly different because it wasn't like I was like hanging out or dating somebody that I and then and sometimes right. it's not mine. I wasn't dating. We See, were not dating. I dated because I wasn't physically attracted to the person features face, but from the neck down, I was yeah that's attracted. right. So I took it a little further. Said, so let's see where this goes. Now, if this was what not that right, so where did right, it go? Stop. Are y'all going to dinner? Oh, we went to dinner. That's how we. See, I'm not doing that. We did the first thing. We went to dinner. Mm -mm. I'm just like the chat. You know, you sitting there in the, the bubbles at the top of your head. The mm -hmm. child is fine, but that face is a is a no. Too. You can come to my house. We can. Go, I can go to your house, but that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need to stop. Go. Nope. So you wouldn't went to dinner with her? No. Mm -hmm. For what? Well, like this guy in particular that I'm thinking about <laughs> in my mind, like literally in the act, I was just like, mm, yeah, I'm not really feeling this. And did I you say why? No, I just said I was Well, because he was waking up. I was waking up. I yeah, was starting yeah, yeah. to have my wake up. Right. And yeah. that was how it would be. And this is not what I want for myself. Right. Yeah. And what I used to do also is, even when the, in the instances where I would go through with it, you feel I, guilty. I would sit there and talk to them because I wanted to at least yeah, feel. Yeah, have a connection. Yeah, it was, it, in my own dysfunction, I was yeah, thinking, yeah. well, let me at least try to familiarize myself right. so they're not really a stranger. Right. And I'd be just sitting there talking to them. We sit down on the side of it, you know, just, and then all of a sudden we just get in and just stop playing. Right. Yeah. Mm. And was, afterwards, too. <laughs> <laughs> mm hmm. Okay. Because that's how the, the, the threesome went down. That's I was a, when I was a guest star. Oh. Now, why were you the guest star? That's what Because they were a couple. And I was very intentional about, like, I don't want this to be an ongoing thing. 
Right. I don't want it to be an ongoing thing. I don't want it to be with somebody I'm dating. I want to be able to just make an appearance, <laughs> say my right. lines, and, Where you and go. <laughs> say my lines. You know what to say is like, were you in the middle? It was a kind of, you know, oh, oh, we were all oh. taking turns. They enjoyed gay sex. <laughs> but, you know, but here's my thing, too, though. I only had one threesome one time. That was years ago. And again, I was kind of in my darkness at that time. Mm -hmm. And it was with a couple. But I don't think I would, well, not think, I would never do that in my own relationship. No, nor I. Cause because I think someone always gets the short end of the Always. <laughs> and, and even though they always, the couple always agrees, listen, we're only going to do this together. Yeah. Once. There's always that one person that likes it more yes. and end up trying to do it by himself. That's right. Or, because the one of the guys one started of the, reaching out to you, and and so he owned a comic book store in Chicago, and I could walk to his. So comic all this book, was in Chicago. Yeah, yeah. I could walk to his comic book store, and he, he was, was doing a lot of walking. I was, and he locked the door <laughs> <laughs> and put that sign closed. So <laughs> after the threesome, you started hooking up with one of them. Mm -hmm. He started walking to the comic book store. And right yeah, and see, and see, and again, his partner probably had no clue. I think he did. Did like, you feel guilty about that? Why would I feel guilty? I would because <laughs> he knew he had a partner and you had you But had I wouldn't see that's not that's none of my business. Mm. I'm the correct, I couldn't do it. Because I would I even though I don't have any commitment to either one of y'all, right? But I spent time with both of y'all and I would say, What if that was me? That's at home and I'm here with and somebody's there with my partner at the comic book store. I think during that time, like I could not see my moral compass for what I wanted. Okay. If that makes mm -hmm. sense. No, mm -hmm. I get it. So mm -hmm. I mean all well, of that going, was all through. of that was numbing my yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you were going through a, a dark time. So a very not dark time. Thinking. Yeah, no, I wasn't thinking anything. I mean, whereas now, like I, I'm not interested in that app, not even in the slightest. Right. Do you think that changes <laughs> as you get older? Well, see, let me just say this for you. I think it changes as you get more mature. Come, come on, somebody. See, yes. see, you know, and I'm going to tell you, I only had that, I attempted that threesome that one time, and I always say attempted because nobody climaxed. Like, we got naked and it kind of got started. But again, I was... Touched and agreed. Touched and agreed. <laughs> and I was starting to awaken, and I was just like, you know what, this ain't really me. Because I was only doing it because, one, I had just come out of a relationship, Carrington, first book. I had just come out of that relationship, and you know how you have that residual no. stuff left on you Sorry. after you come out of a breakup? Just like Jasmine Sullivan says in that song, you know, sometimes when you break up with somebody, you just kind of want to be like, fuck it. And just go yes, and just, yeah. And so I started to realize, Craig, you're only trying to have this threesome because you've heard people talk about threesomes and this, that. But this ain't really who you are. Right. And so in that moment, I said to them, I said, you know what? This, this ain't really working for me. And I escorted them out because we were at my house. And that was... <laughs> <laughs> you ain't gonna get you, get you ain't gonna get I sure did. You ain't gonna get me to your house. Nigga. You ain't gonna get me. What if I was at their house and then I decided I didn't want to do it and then they gonna lock the door and tell me I gotta go. change you to the bed. Right. No, oh, they got a video camera in the bed. No, no, you got to come to my house. And so I told her, I said, you know what, this ain't really working for me, so you gotta go ahead and go. But the other reason why three suits don't work for me is because I'm so good at what I do. Oh I have to focus on one being at a time. Okay, I can't be dividing my affection. Across two, two and three people. Oh my goodness! Now, if you want me to satisfy you, I got you. But I can't. Be, you gonna be left out in the cold. Mm. You don't have the stamina. I know I have the stamina, uh, but I'm just very, very uh, uh, hands on, and I'm right. very, very uh, meticulous about what I do. It's cross. You ain't got to go home, but you got to get up out of here. <laughs> yes, you hear me, his cross training is very hands on. <laughs> He can't oh, to somebody said we have been friends long enough, Craig. Stop, stop with Carrington and tell us his real name. <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> you know who it is. I know who it is. Yeah, <laughs> I, I see him all the time. <laughs> oh, oh. Mm. Mm. But yeah, so um, mm. interesting. I, I don't want people to feel that that you haven't done anything. No, no, no. no. I'm just gonna say I don't want people to feel that your history and your path is your path. Don't let, don't take judgment or feel bad about your past because we all have our own past and you, there are lessons to be learned from those past as well. Yes, indeed. As you, as God if said, you're paying you, attention. you mature and you grow up and you say, I've experienced that. Or just like what Craig said, I went through it and in the midst of it, I awaken or I, this ain't for me. Right. It's like, so people ask me, like I've dated people, they're like, 
you're in the bed at you know eight thirty nine o'clock. True or mm -hmm, not? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm like, Scott, <laughs> listen, eight forty five. Scott got his rollers in. He <laughs> took his bra off. <laughs> Nightgown is on. Not Zima is up under the eyes. Scar all heat. That's right. <laughs> Go ahead. So when they say that to me, you know, in my mind. I'm thinking, because I know what they're saying. They're saying, like, you're old, you know, whatever. But they don't know all the stuff that I've done. It's like, shit, I'm tired. Like, right. I've done a but lot. But that's a perception from those young people, too. <laughs> Y'all don't know how to fly fun. Baby, I've, I've been had where my you share of fun. To. I've, I've had your there. share of fun. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to educate them, though. But I remember one time, this was when I first moved here, too. I remember one time driving on Peachtree Street. And y'all were rampant in the city then. <laughs> you gays. Y'all were rampant in the city then. And I think it was like a holiday weekend. Right and, Labor Day. Yeah, yeah. And I was driving and this boy was just like like behind my car. And then he came up on the side. I don't know why he driving like that. This nigga pulls to the side and he like, put your window down. He said, What's going on? What's up? How you doing? Like he was trying to holler at me on Peach Street Street. Yeah. And I was just like, it's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> but I had some girls chase me one time in the car. I'm trying to holler. I said, um. <laughs> yeah. I, that's that's the feeling I got. You're like, this is what they do here? Mm -hmm. They're going to track you down in the street and bowl about what they want and have no shame in asking for what they mm -hmm. want. Now, either you comply or you deny. <laughs> that was my answer. <laughs> deny or comply. <laughs> there was some complaints. So I'm complying and there was a lot of denying. How old were you when you had your first sexual experience? Well, okay, so what we'll, a guy. How are we defining sexual oh, experience? Okay, Elliot. No, I'm being serious. <laughs> like, what are we saying? What are we saying is a <laughs> How are you why are you gonna call him me? How are you? Because now he act like he don't know what's going on. No, because I I mean I've done He wants clarity. What do you define as first sexual experience? A little touch, touching of a green, a little oral. Or do you a... do you ejaculate? Do you like what? Okay, first of all, let me let me let me let me let me say it like this. You don't have to ejaculate. This is the way I look at it. If it's something that you would not do with an underage person, it qualifies as sex. If we look I at was underage. Right, but what I'm saying is, it is like when people are like that wasn't really sex. Then my answer, my question is always, <laughs> but damn, um, that means everybody. Amber alert. Amber alert. Amber alert. <laughs> right, but no, I'm saying like, for example, like when people say, well, that wasn't really sex. I'm like, well, is it something you could have done with an underage person and people wouldn't have deemed it as inappropriate? Yeah. Okay, so I was. <laughs> Somebody said, okay, Bill Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> I was twelve. Twelve. Yeah, I was twelve. Chad, <laughs> see what they do in Ohio? Twelve? I was twelve. Did you know what you were doing? Um, I didn't until he made me ejaculate. He? Yeah. So the first was that the first experience? Yeah. Period. All together. Yeah. Well, I mean, I did a little patty cake, patty cake with somebody when I was like nine or ten. He was we pulled our pants down around our ankles. Let me see yours, let me see yours. No, we laid on each other, we patted and then you know. Our penises pressed against each other like that. Oh. Yeah, he was fifteen though. But that's all we did. I see you were fat. Were you? No. Well, I so and you, this was the first time I ever ejaculated. No, no. Were you ruined? Yeah. I don't even know if I could have ejaculated. What? At 12. Were you? Were you? Were you? You say he was fifteen. Was he grooming you, or was he pressuring you? Did you feel it was peer pressure, or was he coaxing you? No. So. <laughs> For all the like, parents that have twelve year olds, <laughs> this is the time to have a conversation with your twelve year old. Because they might be getting ready. <laughs> um, this is like a hard story to talk about. Because essentially, I I think that I was molested. Yeah, I do. Um, because he, I as a kid, I had a nanny, and it, this was her, her grandson. Son. Okay. Mm hmm. Um. And yours? I told you mine was eighteen with the football player. That was the first one. Now, that's not to say, like I said, I had an education, like I said, from the cheerleaders because I lived through them telling the stories about, and then I would look at the guys differently because they would tell me who had what, how, what it was, what size it was. And I was like, how are y'all knowing this? Because they were having sex with them. Well, so, and the missing part of that is that we messed around until I went away to college. 
<laughs> the boy, the boy that you just talked. Yeah. Uh -huh. So that was from twelve to eight. That was six years until I went away to college. And oh, God. so he was three years older than you. He kept coming back. I want to share something with you guys. This is the new goalie gummy. Do you see? It says immune triple action immune. It has zinc. Vitamin C, vitamin D, and elderberry. Would you like to try to? They're very good. Okay. This has become my favorite. Oh, wait, but you chew it, right? It's not. Yeah, they're gummies. Okay. Um, Damn, they're they big. Oh, these are two. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> the link is in my in the caption of the video. Go to goalie.com. Craig Dwight Stewart. Oh, they're good. Aren't they good? They're very these good. These are new as of when? They just shipped them to me the other day. Mm. Like, I can eat. Like several. Right. Yeah, you know, so eat two. Eat two again. Just eat two. Right. Just not eat too many. You have a zinc overload. Oh, right. <laughs> it's like eating like a real gummy. Ain't it good? Is it coming out? There it is. Let me I already there. had my two for the day. But listen, I need about 10 saints to go over there. Thank you very much, Bug Need. I need about 10 saints to go over to goalie.com and use my promo code, Frank the Writer Stewart. Well, they're sweet. Oh, they are sweet, but they're good. They taste like real gummy. Yes, they do. Mm, okay. That's I'm only sugar. five grams of sugar. Oh, that's, I can, that's not bad at all. I can taste the elderberry. Mm. But that's a strong flavor in it. Listen up. Listen up. <laughs> listen up. <laughs> listen up. <laughs> and look, also, don't forget, um, you already signed up. Did you sign up for the um, or well, Oh, I forgot. I'm sorry. Don't forget well, to I sign up. Here, really. Oh, that's right. He's not going to be here. You still support. I know, I know, I will. I forgot. <laughs> Look, we all it. Well, you still <laughs> listen, don't forget, I'm doing a um, but even if you're not gonna be in Atlanta on June 18th, we are um doing a 5k walk or run, and it benefits organ donation. This is really important to me, and it's really important to the black community because black folks don't typically donate organs, right? And a lot of times when black folks need an organ, you can't get one. Right. So it's $25 to sign up. So the link is in the caption of this video, okay? It says, join my race, or whatever it's called. But the race itself is called, I am, I am a father. And then you click on join a team or something like that. My team is called the writer's block. If you need help walking through it, just email me through my website and I'll walk you through it. But um, so anyway, so say, when you talked about that the last time, mm -hmm. someone actually wrote in the comments like, Y'all shouldn't joke about that. And I so talk about what we I, we were talking about. You said something about I need all my stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. And we were being silly. We were being it's silly about a very serious. Topic. Exactly. Whoever said that, I hope you went and signed up. Like, how about that? Well, I think they were. A, if I remember, I don't remember everything. Right. Think, but well, it, well it hopefully was, they signed up. It, it, I, I'm gonna say this. We joke about a lot of and, stuff. And it's the thing that a lot of people are thinking. And yeah. so we're trying to, you know, dismantle that. And that was why I said it because. My thought process before was like, well, I don't want to be cut up. Like, I, I want all my organs. And, and I know that a lot of people probably think the same way. And I did actually, like, I walked away from that conversation, even though it's in my will to, or my living will to, for me to be cremated. Uh -huh. I did start thinking about, like, my organs and donating them to, right. like, because I work at Emory School of Medicine sometimes, and mm -hmm. I thought about donating it to them right. for research. For science, yeah. Right, yeah. Well, I say this, even though they, whoever said that comment, you have to lighten that sometimes. And also we have to respect those people who feel that way. So let's not get, I, I don't want people to get wrapped up in their own emotional feelings to mm -hmm. ignore other people's thoughts. Right. That was a valid comment yeah. because people do live that way. And yeah, I respect absolutely. that. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's but I, not going to think the way you think. I mm -hmm. agree. But I also think sometimes we should challenge, because I think that that's passed down learned behavior. Exactly. And sometimes you have to challenge you to think differently. Right. And respectfully. But, but sometimes doing that is approaching that subject in a lighthearted manner. And to educate I, exactly. I, and, I, that, and that's what we were trying to do, trying yeah. to approach it in a light way. Because I just don't want people to think that we don't take stuff. Take like it seriously, seriously. right? Well, if, I, if I didn't take it seriously, we wouldn't have been talking about right now. If, if if you're getting in here, and you're being judgmental. Then this is the wrong room for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay? And this ain't even my damn life. Like, this age, I'm so sick of people taking everything when so seriously. Girl, check them. Right. Move on. Right. And see, and that's the thing too. And like, I check my clothes if they're naked. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna check in this t-shirt, these panties, these socks, oh my God. and I need all of my things when I come out of here. They gave you a little clothes pin with your number on. Oh, they didn't even my give you a bag? 
Uh, you got a little box to put your clothes in, yeah, uh, like you going away to summer camp, basically, <laughs> and they put it on the shelf. My God, yeah. <laughs> but no, but the reason um, I think a lot of times people don't have difficult conversations is for this very reason: is because people are afraid of being judged, people are afraid of sounding ignorant or being, also, or being labeled ignorant or whatever. Yeah. But people are also afraid of hurting other people's feelings. Right, right, right. Well, yes, I'm beyond that, child. I'm yes, all this hurt people's feelings grow up. Life is not going to be a box of cookies. It's going to be tough times. When my mother taught me, baby, you got to learn to withstand the tough times to get through them. Mm -hmm. Everybody ain't gonna like you, so you mm -hmm. got you know grow some skin. It's gonna be a little thick. We all got emotions, but you got to step over that and keep it moving. Did somebody mm -hmm. just say I'd munch on Scott? Oh my God! Oh, God. <laughs> what flavor is he? Vanilla. <laughs> My God, did that? I'd munch on Scott. That's a loaded statement. Uh, I'd munch on Scott. That's that Donnell Holt. Oh God, Donnell, stop it. Okay. Um, <laughs> invite, invite him over. I'm a lock the door. That's that Donnell Holt. <laughs> Scott looking all caramel. <laughs> A blog, a blog together. Me, Ooh. the three of us, and um, hey, where is that Ryan? And Ryan, he was he was working over at the coffee shop. Today. Last week he was working. This week he's at the coffee shop. <laughs> mm hmm. But yeah, but um, you're gonna be gone for two weeks. Yeah. So, but I'm thinking we're only gonna do it maybe like twice a month because I don't want it to be a thing where we're trying to get everybody and you know yeah, I don't yeah. want it to be I want it to be more effortless. So we you will start Zoom. I think the energy is so much better though in person. I agree. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Zoom has a pause. Or something yeah, like that. and sometimes the jokes don't work. land. A little has pause. A pause and like, yeah. what you said? I said again. Yeah, yeah. With delay, a delayed response. Yeah, sometimes. it's like a little delay sometimes. I was gonna make you some cookie dough today. Oh, what happened? <laughs> you know, Scott makes <laughs> me make cookie dough. You, <laughs> you shared that with delay. Oh yeah, I did share it with you guys. Um, what happened to the cookie dough? Well, my call got canceled. That's why I came over early. So I just oh. came over to do the thing for your mom. Oh, yeah, that sounds amazing. Call got canceled. Mm. And I'm gonna tell you something else. You work from home, girls. I know y'all messing around in the afternoons too. Now, oh, no, well, I, I don't do that. I, I gotta focus on it. No, I do. You ain't have to be on massage in the middle of the day. Did you see them children when I've been on the phone? I can't be like, hold on, girl, you gotta do that payroll. Let me get this last stroke in. No, I, I can't do that. Stroke. stroke. Because I'm going to lose focus and you're going to be disconnected. <laughs> I said we're not saying do it while you're on the call, but he's saying like in between. No, because I have a lot of call in between. That's a ten minute, twenty minute break or an hour. But I don't mean? want to be on no time clock like that. <laughs> I do not. I don't like to be timed like that. So you my time on the time. Oh, too. absolutely. Yeah. You must be doing quickies. No, because mm -mm. I have gaps. Literal <laughs> and figurative. <laughs> Are we still talking about your schedule? Or are we talking about? We talking about wherever your mind went. <laughs> Ah! <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, somebody said I do. I will leave my house with my laptop, child. Mm -hmm. Oh, she said that. She said she'll, she'll leave the house with her laptop to go do a quickie. It doesn't have to be a quickie. Like I have two hour gaps in my in my schedule. Sometimes three. Listen, Carlton was late to work a couple times trying to. Right. A little afternoon delight ain't nothing mm -hmm. wrong with it. <laughs> I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it, but that's not my cup of tea. In fact, like sometimes I find myself more focused after they play. <laughs> I find myself sleep. <laughs> that's why that would be. <laughs> I'm just saying. My God, today he's more focused. Mm. So, is it a certain day of the week that's more prominent than others? Because you know, a lot of people wait to hop day. That Wednesday nope. is that day that they just. I'm a Monday Friday push. guy. Little Monday gets my day going. Little, little Friday, Friday well, I just slide on down next <laughs> weekend. Okay. What about you, Chris? I'm any day of the week. I mean, okay. Morning, twenty four seven, nighttime. <laughs> I'm always ready to touch and be touched. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> my virgin is. Oh, Bert, what? Oh Jesus. <laughs> so you ain't never had like no outdoor sex. Elliot has in lived. a car. You sure haven't lived. You haven't lived. I've lived enough for me. You ain't had nothing in the car. You ain't never had done nothing in the car. I don't like the car. I have a bad back. <laughs> you had a bad back at 26. 
She ain't like she was always. <laughs> and now you got a bad shoulder. So you can't even do a little reach right. down. <laughs> I never been that, you know, people let's go to the woods in the park. What? No, I don't I'm want about that. comfort. I don't want to be in the woods, but I've done it in the car. That's for sure. I've definitely done it in the car, pulled right down on the dark street over there on Lennox Road. Oh. It, it was it at least a dead end. Look, I did. Yeah, it was one of them. I did it on my street in front when you lived on Twenty Sixth Street. I lived really? in front of my building. Okay. I did that when I lived in LA. We went yeah, to yeah, the yeah. windows at least. No, I did. I was dating this Hispanic guy, and we were in Toluca Lake. We had just come from hiking. You're it was right. the middle of the day. It was the middle of the day, and the sun was just starting to go down. And we were parked on the side of the street where his car was parked and it was this lady coming down the street and i was in the passenger side and when i said he was riding me with no tinted windows the window was down it's la I mean, but it just looked like he was sitting on my lap right that's not unconventional i mean because he still had on his shirt or right. sweatshirt or whatever he had on and he was just getting it people ain't paying no attention to so i wasn't even in there about two minutes and before i knew he had came all the time <laughs> <laughs> but uh <laughs> he had just come all over the place I ain't even never get mine. No, that's ooh, no. Because he came so quick. <laughs> anytime, any place. Say, Alexa, play anytime, any place. <laughs> okay, Janet. Mm. So you no. ain't never done nothing outside? Uh, you need to sign up. Alexa, pause. <laughs> you better ask Alexa. No. You get Sam Alexa. Stacy said, I was in the parking lot of a club. I know that's right. How about when I first moved to New York, I was leaving tracks and I had What part you know about tracks? I used to hang out in tracks when I lived in New York. Okay. So I was coming around the corner at the parking lot, and there were two guys on the back of my car fucking. <laughs> on your car? Bent up, one, one was bent yeah, over was. on my car, Little and the bitch. other one. And so I just kind of stood there, because I was like, I don't even know what I'm supposed to do. So my friend, who's from, I'm like, Get off my, my friend who's from New York, was like, walked over to him, and he was like in one of those houses, and he was real tall. He was like, um, excuse me, we got to go. <laughs> Oh my God! Yeah, I have seen it in the club here. Alexa, pause. Girl, shut up. Weekend, and I can't remember the name of the club. Here? It was on. It was on Peace Street, and they, they closed it now. It was a, one of those Labor Day weekends, and it was so jam packed. It was on Peace Street. Django? No, no, no. It was older. It was before Fusions. It was. Oh, it was. It um, was across the street from. It used to be Black Street. It was across the street. Black Street. Yeah, it was Metro. Metro. I don't know if that was it. Or um, there used to be Petrus um, on. This is back when 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 the palace was going on. Right. So was it closer to like Bulldog? No, it was further. It's going toward 14th. Street. It was 14th. So where um, I forget what the. So when I went there, it was called Petrus, but then it was something else. It was, it was the older name. Right. No, Petrus is the older name because it. I saw Grace Jones perform there. Oh, it wasn't that name, dog. Was so it was, um, so after that, because Warren Huntley used to have parties there. It was just interesting. You know what we're talking about, like the club that sits on, you can go in from Crescent or you can go in from Opera. Crescent. Opera. That's, it, it was, it was before it was called Opera, but something else. Right. Uh -huh. in the name. But it's the same spot. And they were, Kaya. It was, that was it, Kaya. They was, we was clubbing and mm -hmm. it was packed and you know how the strobe light is playing yeah, yeah. and we were in there and then I'm like, am I seeing what I'm seeing? They were across from me, two guys, and they had on overalls with no shirt, no underwear on. The boy literally dropped his overalls, and the other guy was behind, and they was having sex on the middle of the floor where the music was playing. People was just dancing around, and I'm like, they're literally having sex in the middle of the floor. People aren't paying attention. I was like, glue. Like, what is going on? But I'm back to you. Where have you had <laughs> sex outside of the house? <laughs> Never in the car. No. That's Never in, like, a parking lot. No. <laughs> a laundromat? No. Roller skating? A scary. laundromat. Putt putt go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Public that restroom? That's dirty. It is not. So you've always been in somebody's house? I'm, I'm about comfort. You can be comfortable in the bathroom? No. That's, you, them bathrooms are disgusting. On like, an airplane. How about on an airplane? Oh, that's too tight. I'm so, a lot of people like it tight. I, that, if they get in that bathroom to do something, they crazy. No, you meant tight. That's in the hole. I mean, it's in the space. So I'm 
starting to think your sex might be a little boring. <laughs> Look, you can think what you want. <laughs> Somebody said a funeral home. <laughs> oh, no. You're messing, you're messing with the dead, honey. Oh, so disrespectful. Wow. wow. <laughs> I'm trying to think. I can't. Yeah, listen. So oh, that's the part. Huh? Like a pet, they had a patio like yours, but they, they were on a wooded lot with nothing on each side of them. It was raining. So you did it on there? Yeah. That was adventure. Was it sex? Yeah. Because it was raining. All the way. All the way. Okay. Um, you, want, you want me to tell you a really juicy story? Mm -hmm. One time I had my dick sucked. I was leaving Chastain Park. We had just went to see Luther Vandross. Oh, my goodness. And we were driving back. So when I lived in. Oh, wait. You Go ahead. I'm done. <laughs> it was just that quick. When I lived in Emmett Park, mm. um, my fuck buddy used to come over and we would fuck on the balcony sometimes. In the daytime? No, hell uh, no, not in the day. But it would be late. It would be late at night. Uh huh. And so one night we were out there, we were fucking around. Uh, and so I looked down and there's somebody down there watching, looking up. watching us jacking off. No! Yeah. And we both were like turned off. Are you serious? Yes. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> invite the no, absolutely not. I would have been too freaked out to do that. I hate automated systems. I tried to get um, Carlton to mess around when we went to Mexico at the time. I wanted to do something on the beach, and he was all scared. On the beach? It was nighttime. That's sand all in your crotch. <laughs> That's why we got showers. I don't That's like so things. fun. Right. That's what you you need to start drinking. No, I'm not. <laughs> that ain't gonna change nothing. Yes, it will. Because I don't like the alcohol. Because when you have work. a drink, it makes your your uh, decision making skills mm -hmm. a little questionable. No. No. Listen, I need to give you a little edible. I, no, I definitely would not be taking that. <laughs> yeah, Please, not with that oxy either. Well, <laughs> he ain't even taking the oxy for this for this arm. I like to be in control. Which part of this are y'all missing? I do too. I like to be in control too. But every I'm now and then you gotta control. cut loose. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> what? Uh, Carlton's mother said, Elliot, my mother has the bear in her bed and asked her last night if she wanted some chips. Oh, the little teddy bear. Oh, you gave her a teddy bear? The, for, for Valentine's. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let me see. I did it in an empty room in the nursing home with an oh, employee. Oh, wow. They did it ooh, in a nursing That's home? That's a little different than the hotel. Was it with a patient? Or no. was it with an employee? They said it wrong. They said it out. <laughs> mm. I'm interested in a lot of things. I don't know about no geritol. <laughs> Look, the older you get, the more you'll be interested. In. Right, right. Yeah. I hope they were all asleep or in some activity. That's a little weird. Well, they have beds. You like comfort. <laughs> <laughs> and they have adjustable beds. Adjustable. <laughs> you just get that Clorox smell. Oh my God. It's always going to be something. He got an answer for everything. <laughs> issue with everything. Well, let's go see you go to a nursing home and get busy. Wow, that don't sound, sound appealing. <laughs> oh, now, there's, uh -huh. I got I to gotta see what it looks like. Wow, doesn't matter. It, no, it matters. Mm. I mean, I'm not saying just go for it. It definitely matters. Mm. Okay. It definitely I'm matters. I'm adventuresome with a different twist. I just like comfort at home. Even I'm like Craig with even doing massages. So have you I'm to that point now, I prefer you to do it at my house. I don't like to go to people's houses right. or to their spots to do massages. because I'm like, Craig, I don't know what you got in here. We have a question on the table. Have you ever been to a sex club? And I'm not talking about flex. I'm talking about a sex club. No. Or a sex party. No. I was that one that turned to one I and I left. It was a birthday party and you know they had a basement. Yeah. And I don't know if I told you the story. We was upstairs and people started to disappear. <laughs> I I'm bet like, they did. What is going on? All these folks leaving. And I'm thinking they're leaving, but you know you look out the window and the, the cars, cars are still out of there. there. Yeah. So somebody said and they came up to get something to drink and they still had on their clothing, but they had taken their shirt off and they just had on a white beater and some shorts because it was during the summer. And I'm like, are y'all that? What is going on? He said, oh, the party's downstairs. I'm thinking they down there playing spade or something. Child, I go downstairs. Nosy Nancy surely went down there to sleep. Baby, they down there with a mattress in the middle of the floor, two of them, twin size mattresses, and these people just going in. And I'm like, what in the world? And the boy said, you want to join? Oh, no, 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 ma'am. I'm leaving. <laughs> Did you leave right away? 
I packed my bags and put my purse under my arm and left. I was done. <laughs> I am better than this. <laughs> <laughs> and punched it. And, and the child was still the far. Carl's were Carl's in <laughs> I said, you didn't tell me. He said, well, this is what I do for my birthday. This is not uncommon. Why did, he, what, why did you have to be told? I need to know what's going on if you invite me to these functions. Yes, I dated a Hispanic guy. Listen, I'm OK with dating black and brown people. It's that other that I'm not really too sure about. Mm. I'm an equal, equal opportunity. A Scott is equal opportunity. <laughs> you ain't dating nobody white. Dated. And he would find somebody white. Who told you that? You did. <laughs> I would. Try. I do want to try. I had a white man suck my dick. He's my dick. Who's man? You. Today. You know what? You're going to start that line. <laughs> mm. I've had black, let the His Dominican, mm -hmm. Puerto Rican, Brazilian, mm. what's the child? Um, Caribbean all day long. Can I just tell y'all real quick? This is completely off subject. When you said uh, Brazilian, <clears throat> I thought about Portuguese uh, speaking people. Um, Viola Davis's memoir is it good? Oh my God, it is so good. And she, the reason why I thought about it was because she went to school. She's from. She was born in South Carolina on a plantation but she was raised in Central Falls, Rhode Island. And they apparently have like a high um, Portuguese rate mm -hmm. or population. And they don't consider themselves black. Mm -hmm. And she talks about how, where are they Portuguese from Portugal? Or are they from Brazil and speak Portuguese? Well, in one instance, she mentioned um, somebody was from Brazil, mm -hmm. um, but she didn't really clarify on all of them. But um, it's just like Boston has a lot of Cape Verdeans. Right. And she said that um, a lot of them don't consider themselves black. Or minorities. And, right. And they were chasing her home with the white boys, calling her niggers. Mm -hmm. And she said when they caught her one day, she said, why are you doing this to me? She said, you're black just like I am. And the guy looked at her and then looked at all the other white boys, you know, because it was almost like he was found out. But it's crazy. No, it's like that. I was telling somebody when they go to Houston, Texas, Brittany just went down there. And she mm. says <clears throat> she was offended because she said these Mexicans and these these down here in Texas, they think they're better than black people. I see you just not knowing that. You better go on out there to California because sometimes they act like that in California. Yeah, too. I I'm said, like, there, a lot of them are lost. Right. I'm like, girl, we all in the same boat. Exactly. You're, you're lost. <laughs> OK, we are in the same boat. But I, I experienced that in California. I had a lot of Hispanic people that kind of turned their nose up. Like, they just thought they were kind of like with the white folks. Oh, OK, that's what y'all doing? Oh, is that what y'all doing? And you have to check yourself with it. You have to think about it. Baby, you're a minority all day long. You're yeah. not. You're not. When you check that box, it says Hispanic, not white. Mm -hmm. There is. You're not white. But they do. Some of them do consider themselves as Anglo-Saxons. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Mm, interesting. Mm -hmm. No, I've never done the sex party thing. You haven't either, have you? No. No. I mean, well, I guess bare naked could be considered a yeah. sex party, but um, no. Not in like somebody's house with mattresses on the floor. And well, you, they had a match. They had an arena for them to do what they did at bare naked, didn't they? They had what? An arena. There was a space. No, no. It's just a, it's a bar. But people were carrying on doing that on the side, right? Absolutely. So they standing up doing it. There's no comfort. There's no mattress. There's no. Nothing on the floor. Mm -hmm. They just bend over and, get, and grab everywhere. everywhere. Mm -hmm. Everywhere. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, there's tables and just it's a bar. Now it did happen to me in New York too. Went to a birthday party because Mrs. Guy had the same birthday, and he and I was surprised because he put on the birthday cake, Mike and Ellen. I was just like, I was you know, and he had an apartment up in Harlem, mm -hmm. and, and these were his friends. I didn't know these people. Mm -hmm. but me and him had gone to school. We was in class together, and I'm when I'm like, why my name on this cake? These people don't know me. Mm -hmm. Then. I wasn't a bartender. I'm not a bartender. So I'm in the kitchen and I see people coming in and they're putting their clothes in the bag. I said, whoa, wait a minute, what's going on? Because it had three, it had two bedrooms. And I didn't I didn't go any further than the living room and the kitchen, because it was a kitchen, then a long hallway, then the living room, then the two bedrooms all go. Because I never went to the bedrooms, but you had to pass the bedrooms to get to the bathroom. And when I went to the bathroom, that's when I saw there was two rooms. Both of the mattresses were stripped down with nothing but a fitted sheet on them. And there was towels and he had buckets with he had little plastic containers with lube and condoms. Oh in my it. God. And then the people start disappearing again. I said, what the hell? Here we go again. Mm. But now, you knew this time. I knew that time. <laughs> and I said, 
I and I went looking for him. Child, he was in there in the room getting done, getting done. And I said, mm. Well, I was on a crew, the Atlantis cruise. Um, that was a gay cruise? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I knew what to expect because all my friends had prepared me. But then we were walking past rooms going to a friend of ours' room who was having a birthday thing. A cabin? Yeah, a cabin. And they had, like, in there, like, a big sling. Set a swing? Up, sling. A sling. In the room. And so I was like, housekeeping has been in this room. Like, what is going on right I know that, now? And it was suspended from the ceiling of the camp. No, it was like a, a travel sling. Like, the, it had poles that you put together, and then the, like, yeah. Yeah. It was crazy. I had never seen And the door was like open. That. And so, and people decorate their door and basically tell you what, what they're interested what in. It was a whole, it was like a whole new world. Did you know I, about the handkerchief thing? Because I was educated. Yeah, about yeah. That. Well, what they happened with the different colors? They, in different colors pocket. tell you what you're into. Like if you wear oh, I have heard of that. red, you're a top, you wear blue, you're a bottom, you wear yellow, you like piss. Yes. If you wear da 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 If you, you wear, wear yellow, you like piss. If you wear southern color, you like you're getting fisted. You're into golden showers. All kind, it's all kinds of colors. I said, that's a lot. A lot. It's a lot. I was blown away when they educated me about that. I was just like, what? Yeah. So there's a lot of underground stuff that I have no idea what me that means. And I'm I'm good with my ignorance. And so that <laughs> kind of carry on goes on at like cruises, gay cruises. On the or... Atlanta, on the cruise that I was on, yeah. And they're doing that like all times of the day and night. But on the flip side of that, like if you want to go to a piano bar and sing show tunes with old people, there's that group of people. But was this cruise strictly gay people only? Yeah, yeah. Not intermixed. No. It's, like the they booked the right. whole cruise. They okay. they oh really yeah right. There's a nudist section on the beat. Like so, I was having breakfast and this guy joined me, and I we were talking about stuff. And I was like, so what have you been doing? He's like, oh, I've been hanging out in the nudist section. I was like, where's the nudist section? And he was because like, <laughs> she definitely wanted. Uh -huh. He didn't say. <laughs> Like, oh, I'm shocked. He's no, like, I'm interested. Where is it? <laughs> Can you direct me? How do I get there? So he was like, oh, it's up da, 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 at the front of the ship. And so I was laying on my chaise and I looked up there and there they were walking all around just completely naked. I was like, and in oh. front of the, the workers and everything. Yeah. You think this was their first rodeo? Now, I have had flirtatious situations with on, on cruises with some of the workers. These, I mean, these people you never just invite, yeah. invite you into their room. You never did anything on a cruise? Child, I made sure that door was open. Every time he was in there, I was in that room because I was attracted to the man. And you were? Uh, yes, I was. And he was, and he was. Oh, why was he coming into your room? He was my steward. Oh. And he spoke English and he was from it's a overseas. -E A-R-D. <laughs> <laughs> and he was very handsome. And I was just like, he was flirting. And I'm like, but I'm, but Craig, no, I tip when I do my tip. I tip them very well because they do a lot of work, and I had to be mindful. He that this child I think he work. wanted to be tipped with some booty. I think you you that tipped him. You gave him a gratuity. Mm -hmm. That wasn't happening. <laughs> if, if if he had closed the door, what would have happened? I would have had to get out the door. Why? That is un that's inappropriate. There's lots of things that are inappropriate. But no. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> Let me move into an area that I know you enjoy. So, um, I know you enjoy like massages and things like that. Are like, you trying to say something? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, like, give us some um, some of your adventures with massages. Well, the thing with massages. Has anybody ever slipped their finger oh, out my goodness into goodness. the neither region? <laughs> but you were getting massaged. And then it turned into all hot, steamy, oily. I've had a session where someone tried to, and I said, What are you doing? And they What do you do? Took them fingers down between the cracks. Wow. Into the equator. <laughs> <laughs> Did he reach the Earth's crust? No, because I was like, because it because you <laughs> <laughs> Did he reach the Earth's crust? I was caught off guard because you know, I got to the point where now when I do them, I don't put my head in that in that hole. <laughs> Trusting you, and in the child had a sweaty. You know what? 
you know why that he was sweating profusely and a drop. Did he? Oh no. Then he went uh, there and did that. That's said, oh. that your crack. <laughs> and I and that was the end of the massage for me. But I thought this is what you was looking for. No, baby. This was why it's your house. No, this was that that's why this was one of my early ones. <laughs> that's why she won't get no massage outside of her house no more. Right. Because I was I was because I'm thinking oh, about it. Yeah. Elliot is such a classy lady. I love him. <laughs> oh, classy lady. I love him. <laughs> that made me think differently because I'm like, yeah. this oh, child is 6'2". Oh, my God. I'm 5'7". I'm in their space. <laughs> I don't know what's where. And, and, and they could just jack me up at home. No, baby. Mm -mm, well, he was right. trying to jack you up. He sure was. <laughs> they finger you in the process. My God, today. Yeah, well, I thought this is what you was looking No. I didn't ask for no extra additives. I didn't ask for no extra So you're a deep tissue. <laughs> he had his own version of deep and tissue. Yeah, he was trying to get you your tissue in your. Because uh, some people, it starts out that way and people get involved because when people deep get what? involved because when <laughs> uh -huh. he was doing one. You know, I had I used to be a stripper and he used to moonlight and do um, massages therapy? on the side. Oh. And, and sometimes the client gets overpowering with the therapist. I had to cut him off though when I overpowered? got overpowered. That's they get oh, overpowering great. with the areas where they want more than what they they're coming oh, to the other oh, side. Oh, I see. Okay. They start taking the people's hand and want to direct them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I see, uh -uh. I've seen that before, actually. Oh, well, actually, that happened to me where the massage therapist directed my hand. <laughs> Did you have a certain type of massage? Uh, you enjoyed it though. Oh, oh, I was open to it. I ain't gonna say. Okay, that. what type of massage was it? It was so I was at a um, respectable place. Yes, basically, and. And he was somebody no, it was in Chicago uh, once again. And he did a lot in Chicago. I did a lot in Chicago. I did not the Windy City for nothing. Let me get my little piece of wood so we can do some um <laughs> what's it called? Not uh you know how you not the snuff when you what's the other thing? Um Palo Santos. Let me go get my little piece of wood. Smudge. Yeah, so you we want can to smudge. smudge. <laughs> I smudged myself. Right. Out. Okay, so what happened? You're in Chicago. And so it's a, like and he's a massage therapist that I had seen before. Mm -hmm. And he tells me, open your hand. Uh -huh. Like, I'm laying on the table with my face in the hole. Uh -huh. <laughs> and he can lay this dick in your hand. He, he, in your hand. hand is, because you land on your stomach. That's right. So your hand is palm Like palm. this. Right. Mm -hmm. Open your hand, not close it. Open and he it. can just pop it in, in your hand. Yep. And you continue to That's open and close. I did. Well, you kind and of, look, you and started. then I, I sat up. And he was like, no, no, no. Did. He was a Russian man. Uh, he was like, no, no, no. Yeah. Because this was a Russian like spot. Yeah. He was was like, it a gay spot? No. No. Not at all. Oh, and so you just kind of. Right. But, he, but that was it. Like, he, nothing happened after that. He got hard? Yeah. Oh, he was already hard when he put it in my hand. Did he come? No. Oh. He was an older man, too. Oh. Old Russian. Old Russian man. Like, old yellow. <laughs> <laughs> Did you even see it? I don't even know if nope, I have any. Never saw it. Oh, see, so, saw it. But the whole thing about the whole theory behind massage, and, and, and I learned this from dealing in the business, it's all about touch. You're, it's not supposed to be visual. It's supposed to be about your your feel, about feeling. That's it. And your mind will take over the rest of it. Because I used to tell people in his training sessions, if you're doing a certain type, you love a training session. You're supposed <laughs> to make the person feel like they have been effed, even though they have not. Because you're going to take their Where senses. Where you learn this from? Chad, that was my You own made thing. this up. Yes, I did. Because <laughs> if you're doing a certain diet, you need to make them feel like they've been done mentally, even though you haven't physically done it. And that's why he was doing that, because that's a sensory what was he thing. Doing? But that's basically he was doing that with Scott. What was he doing? That's what Scott was doing. Well, that's what he, he was like, open, close. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I can't take it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he was doing. Open, close. Open, I hope close. it was not just the, was it the stalk or was it the limb that you was closing on? I don't know. What is he talking about? A tree. Stalk. Oh, it was like. The bulb of the limb. It was like this. <laughs> was it that wire? Yeah. Russian? Yeah. Old? Yeah. But it, I mean, but it was like, baby. <laughs> It was a little short. Oh, it was, it was a, a little numb. It was a juice glass. <laughs> <laughs> a little low ball. But it had girth. Right. Ain't nothing wrong with that. <laughs> if they know what to do with the glass. I mean, but he was old. Yeah. How old? Uh, Well, I had just turned 40, and he was probably like maybe 60-something, 60 63. Nice, really? nice looking guy. And sometimes you can be well-built at yeah. 63. 
he's I mean, he was a nice looking man. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. And, this and was, he was very friendly. Like, now, he, when you book your massage, you would have to be the bleed laying your dick in somebody's hand. <laughs> did you request the male masseur, or did you? Or did he was the only one? one? He was the only one there. Oh, um, so he getting all the girls' money. Well, I mean, honestly, like it was, it was a Russian, it was a Russian banya, which means like everybody in there is Russian. And they beat you with eucalyptus, and they have this like beat you with it, yeah, to open up your pores. <laughs> <laughs> See, I didn't wear it beat strong. Oh, yeah. And beat then they you. have like this. Um, so the the sauna is like two hundred degrees, and then oh they have God. this cold dipping pool. So you get in the sauna. It's like then get in that, and then the, you get in the cold dipping. So pool. you must have went to the Russian community because one of them. It was in the it was in a Russian Polish community yeah. in Chicago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cause that's authentic Russian. Yeah, story. it is. They wear these little things on their head, and and I didn't do all that, but and I didn't do the eucalyptus things. But well, so, what's the thing on the head? I don't know. It keeps the heat in your body. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. I guess yeah. Um, now yeah. in uh -huh. India, they do the tandem, the tantric, which is that's where that originated from. And they and it's in the men do the men where it's body on yeah. body. Yeah, but also there. even like when you go over to Dubai. Yeah, they get. A, I didn't get a massage when I went to Dubai. That's the second book with Rocky. But but when I went, the men are so, I guess. Physical? I, yeah, I think because, you know, so many of their people are like covered. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so like, they don't really have a lot of personal contact, like where they're touching people. Yeah, yeah. Like in public and stuff. Like you don't touch people's hands. Yeah. And they don't, don't want to see you touch them. Right. And you don't see, right. They don't even want you to touch them. And so like. I've heard stories like, you know, like he had told me like stories of like where you just end up hooking up with a man. He may not even be, he may not even be technically gay. He's not. But because but he likes not. the touch. But it's yeah, the physical yeah, touch. Yeah, you're being deprived. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's the same thing with men that are in prison. There are straight men who go into jail. Yeah. And they are in there for however long they're in there and they end up fucking around in jail. Yeah. But then they come out yeah. and they never mess with a guy again. That doesn't make them gay in my opinion. Well, I think there are men that go into jail. Well, what does it make them? I, I, I'm not saying, maybe it makes them sexual. And I think because of the circumstance. Like, cause, Well, why did, I was just saying, what does it make them? Not to say, because we're throwing these labels to say if you're this homosexual, you're having sex with men only. But right. if you're a man who goes to prison and still has a wife on that side, you get into prison. And you've never been with a man before. Correct. And you do what you do in there. Because what? let's just say you've been in jail for four, five, ten years. What is that? What is does that? But then you come out. Well, I believe in the Kinsey scale, which means that you can go from anywhere on the scale given the situation. And if you're in jail and you have no other sexual outlet but yes, another man, it's called your hand. After a while, that but, that's not enough. But you need, like, you do. We need. It's in Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Physical touch is yeah. is a need that we all as okay. Humans but need. there are men in prison who. They don't do that. They keep they they use that's their true. They're all they don't, they yeah, don't I'm, not, I'm not disputing that. Yeah, I'm just saying that you can you can fluctuate on the scale at even any given time, given any given variable or any given situation. Be right. it alcohol, be it drugs, be it whatever's driving your need. <laughs> right. You can right. fluctuate on right. the scale. So what is that? That goes back to what I said. What does that make them when they come out? Sexual. They're sexual. They had, beings. They had an experience right. where they were in jail. Do you think they're going to their fiance or their wife? No, they don't always. And that's why I said to y'all the other day when I was live if you're dealing with a man and he come out of jail, I don't care how long he was in there, you need to get him tested. I saw that. I mean, but haven't you messed around? Didn't you, as a child, did you mess around with boys in the neighborhood that yeah. are straight and married now? I, I didn't mess I forgot what you talking about. <laughs> I forgot. So, yeah. Now, that's not to say people did. You weren't allowed on the no, no, no. <laughs> Well, that's the thing, too. They do have sex with the female guards, because that was the case with my brother. Because he was like, oh, no, I wasn't doing all that. But we, I did a whole podcast with my brother and, like, two other... Uh, Next time, yes. Yes. And two of them were like, well, no, I do understand that sometimes dudes go in and they'll mess around. They were like, that, that never happened to me. And I don't think that that makes them gay. But my brother was like, no, that makes them gay. Mm -hmm. So my you brother, think that makes them gay too? Just because you have them. one experience. No, no, no. I'm saying that makes them have a homosexual experience. Yeah, and that's what that means. It, it was a homosexual. Oh, I, yeah, yeah. yeah but it doesn't mean that you're gay. Just because you're, you're having sex with me and only that doesn't make you gay. Right. But my brother ended up getting transferred like four hours away because 
was having sex with a guard. He was having sex with a female guard. They transferred. Like he's when he first fired her. I, 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 I think they, they. I don't know what they did with her. They did. They fired. They her. They probably they did. found out they fired her because that's compromising a situation. Right. And he was he, at the time when he first went in. He was only probably thirty minutes from home. But when that happened, they moved his ass four hours. Because away. they couldn't give him another charge for sexual assault. Right. But because she was compliant, they terminated her and they moved him to another prison. Because they do sometimes tack on another charge to that. Mm -hmm. And well, whether it was compliant, whether it was complicit or not, you have violated the code of conduct as as an inmate because that's part of the code of conduct oh. that a lot of prisoners don't realize. Yeah. Sex period in jail yes, is a, it's, it's a it's a it's a it's a violation. Yeah, it is. Uh, do that to deter people is. from doing it because they're going to give you another charge to say because then yeah, you got a lot of like, now jails city jails county jails and state prisons and federal prisons are totally different in their rules uh -huh. when it comes to that because right is out i was there doing community service for my scholarship where i had to do ged classes but <laughs> not that you well you taught me that term i didn't know what it means there's different there's sexual <laughs> <laughs> I'm so <sorry>, actual. <laughs> so you didn't have much problem with other boys in that jail. They were, like you said, they were teenagers. They, uh, I was, I was in C76, which is the building that half of the building was for adolescents because they don't have um, a juvenile. Right. They go to the same jail as adults. Uh, half of serious? the building yeah. was for adults. That's, that's what happened with the adolescents. That's that was true. what happened with um, what's the young boy that got um that ended up killing himself when he oh, came yeah, out of jail. jail? He went to jail. Yeah. He went to jail. He was underage. What was it? Khalif, oh, yeah. Khalif Brower. Because yeah. he was there. He was there right because and he's yeah. in the building with adults. And this is they're in one building. And when they go to lunch, the the you have to stand to the side of the hall and let the adolescents pass. Uh -huh. But they're still there. And you know, fights have broken out because they were gang members who they didn't care. That adolescent was in a gang and they were in a different gang as adults, and they and, the, and, the, and they had put guards. Now, me being a civilian, there was cat calling, but my biggest problem wasn't <laughs> what was it? Cat calling. It wasn't. Were you the cat? <laughs> I was the meow. Ah! And my issue wasn't. It wasn't the biggest problem with the inmates because they were because you're a civilian. It was the officers. Mm. Very aggressive. One man was married and he was a stalker and had to report him to his superior. He said, "Well, I'll see you on the street." They moved him to another building. But I was saying talking to you. Yeah, because they're aggressive. Cause they because they're locked up for as many hours as, as the inmates are, and they yeah. so that's basically a pressure cooker. That you're right. Just, I mean, but my brother said, like, one of the things that you learn about prison culture is when you're walking past cells, you don't look in don't look because in. they could be in there having sex, or somebody could or be somebody could say, you, What you do, what you're looking at, right? Or somebody could be about to attack somebody, you're like, you don't want to be witness of anything, right? And then also, you don't walk close to. Like you walk away, snatch you they'll snatch you in there. Like sometimes they're in the line going to the to the yard or the cafeteria or wherever the hell they're going, and they'll snatch you in and fuck you right there. Did that happen to you? Do you need no, we we were always escorted with officers when we were around the inmates because there were incidents where a woman was attacked. This is right because I was honey. So were there any fine men in there? And you like, damn, he fine. <laughs> I ain't gonna hold no. I ain't gonna go out shame. Tell the truth, saying the devil. There was some good-looking men, but a lot of them men would, had drug charges. Some of, and then when they come from upstate to come down and go to court, they're at Rikers Island until they go to court until they go back. So, and there's a lot of Puerto Ricans, Dominicans. It's Rikers Island is a very interesting place to work for six mm -hmm. months doing community service, and I had to go every day, Monday through Friday. So it was interesting. I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. My God, and I learned a lot. What to do, what not to do. He observed a lot of showers. Right. Well, we, were in, we were not in the dorms. That's the thing. We so were you didn't in the classroom. Naked. You couldn't go into the dorms because they had dorms where there's a dorm where they had cells, where it was two man cell, one man cell, and then there was dorms where there's 47 people or more in the dorm where there's bunk beds. It's just an open room and there's bunk beds. And the officer sits in a bubble, which is an elevated desk, and he sits in the room with them. Mm. So that's a dorm. Wow. You couldn't go in there. Now, the people with higher offenses they was in single cells then they had the gay door for the homosexuals yeah, but a lot of straight men no just gay just gay no if you if you said you're gay and you don't want to be in general population they will put you over there and people went over there to get with their boyfriends their significant other 
even straight men would transfer to the gay dorm because they want to go to have sex. Ooh. Because they, they had sales. So the officers weren't paying attention. They didn't really care. Bob, so she used to work in um, Rikers Island in the 80s, and there used to be a welfare center there. Welfare center? Mm-hmm. What building was she in? Because I was in C-76. But what my brother was saying, too, when we did that podcast was, um, all, again, this is just a part of prison culture. When they had female, um, what do they call them? Officers. Correctional, correctional officers. officers. Female correctional officers, when she, if she was interested in one of the guys, if she was smart, what they would typically do is they would get with one of their coworkers that worked in the medical department to see if they had any STDs. Yep. Yep. Then they would check with them to see like what they were in for, like if they were in, typically, if they were in there for doing something against children or something yep. like that, they wouldn't yep. fool with them. But they would just basically check on them first before they made their move on them. And then they would have somebody to check to make sure that nobody was looking when they would go have sex. It was like their version of Google. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) basically. Well, you got to protect yourself. Then a lot of them who are drug-related situations or crimes, they want to recruit officers to bring their product in. Yeah. That's how officers make extra money. It was going down down here in Fulton County Jail. My brother told me that he had women officers that would bring he never really ate the food in the cafeteria because they they brought were, when they, they brought him food like when they were like if they cooked steak or whatever mm-hmm. they were making at home yeah. they would bring them food yes he even said that this, didn't raise an eyebrow for like anybody like well so, they're not doing it openly they bring the food right. and they bring them to the side and they yeah. them give them the food and then also he said that some of the female correctional officers would be out out there in the parking lot arguing and fussing. That's my man, yeah. bitch. I'm fighting over. Are you fight, serious? Fight, fight, fighting over them. Yes. Over somebody that's locked up. Hello. Yes. <laughs> there have been relationships. Our mutual friend that lives in Augusta. She was one. She was one of those officers. Really? And she said they play mind games because they're trying to get you to do things for them. And she mm-hmm. said there was an officer that actually fell in love with a man. She lost her job because she had a full relationship with the inmate. And she did exactly what you just said about. That person went from being an officer to yeah. a social worker. She was a counselor. She would ask her to look at his record to see if he had any HIV, had he been in mm-hmm. a child molestation or rape, before she stopped fooling with it. Mm-hmm. Okay, so question. So would you date somebody that has been to prison? Yes. Prison. Depending on the, I would, depending on the circumstances what the crime was. Okay, so... I'm well, saying that because I'm not perfect. I've been to jail. It's no secret. Well... Writing but you haven't, been to, you haven't been to prison. Oh. But still, that's a stigma. What? what no, it's a stigma because people think that you're defined by your circumstances. No, I'm situation. not saying that. I, I, I'm not defining anyone. But I do think, and I don't believe, I think we all have things that we have done in our past. And but for the grace of God, I just wasn't caught. Right. Exactly. So, you know, like there are things I've done in my past. But I'm asking, like, so if, would you date someone? Like so, you but you're saying that there's a threshold that 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 you can't of their offense. Depending on the offense. Now, if you in there for mur- you in there for a heinous murder. <laughs> well, you ain't coming out if you were there for murder. No, no, like, no, 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 no. <laughs> in New York, they give you life parole, and you have get people have gotten out who got life, but they are on parole for life. And they got out and committed another offense and went back, and their parole was revoked. <laughs> that is the one state that gives you lifetime parole, but you still Ooh, get out. Yeah, so what is it? Elliot has been to jail. <laughs> Y'all don't know this, but Craig and I have locked up our purses in a back in a back room. Baby, I'm about to escort him and just swing up out here. I didn't know he had a criminal record. No, I'm just kidding. No, I knew. I knew. I'm just joking. But no, he was in a car. He didn't know the car was stolen. He was 18. And see, and that's the thing about our youth being entrapped. I knew my rights, but I was still arrested and went through the process of doing fingerprinting and still had to go before a court of law. And I was on a diversion program to get it off my record because I was in the car. Right. Even though I said I was innocent, I was in a stolen car. Sure. But you didn't know. It doesn't matter. You you were in the car that you know you didn't own it, so why are you in it? Right. So that's, and I don't want people thinking, oh, my life is over. Baby, no. No. Yeah, I've definitely done some things that would have landed me in jail for a while. Yeah. Maybe even prison. Mm. But I, it is never nothing to be ashamed of, but I would date someone in jail, depending on the crime. Wait, you were dating while they currently in jail? No, that wasn't no, my question. No, no. Uh, <laughs> my question. If they had a history. Because, I mean, 
And I'm not being funny, oh, you even mean, though you it mean, sounds okay, like currently incarcerated. Currently. No, 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 no. I would say if they had, like, because they've been to jail. I don't think technically, and this is gonna sound like a joke, and it kind of is, but I don't mean it in this way. But I don't think technically you're dating. Like, cause he in jail, right? Well, people get married to people in jail. Why they're but you're not dating. Like, you ain't going well, nowhere. You ain't going nowhere. <laughs> well, that's that's. But for some people, that's their mental. That's the good thing for them. I know where they are. I know where they are at all times. I don't have to worry about them out there cheating. And I said that ain't always true. You don't know what they do. Exactly. Yeah. And that's one of the things yeah. that my brother said too. The ones who have the longest sentences, like the lifers, they call them. The ones that have lifetime sentences, they have the most women. They yes. have the most relationships because women tend to think, or whoever they're dealing with tend to think, oh, well, he's in jail. Ain't gotta worry about and him. I got to worry about him. I'm the only one. But he said they got so many different relationships going on and, and they, they juggle them. Yep. And you're under the impression that, you know, it's a safety net because, oh, well, he can't be seeing anybody else because he's in jail. And I talk about my situation because I tell people all the time, that doesn't define who you are or what you are. Right. Well, and that's the same reason why I talk about my suicide attempt because it are, you know, other things in my life because it doesn't, none of it defines you, not who I am. If you don't allow it to, because some people, they, they carry that towards, yeah. oh, I can't do nothing because yeah, of yeah, this. Yeah. Oh, I can't do this because right. I've had this. That's yeah, not true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Would you date a stripper? A stripper? Um, I don't think so. Why not? So then I know you ain't going to date no uh, porn star. Oh, no. I mean, I we'd fuck, for sure. <laughs> but you're going to date him. No, I'm not dating him. Why not? It's the same thing. Why can't no, it ain't. Same? No. <laughs> it's definitely not. <laughs> well, technically. <laughs> but, because what, I don't, what I don't need to happen is for me to bring my stripper boyfriend over to a dinner party at one of your houses. He'd be like, is that, um, is that Mustang that you in here with? <laughs> Look, what, what's wrong with the second plate? I paid for you pay for it. <laughs> if that's how they make their living, what's wrong with it? There's nothing wrong. There's with nothing it. wrong with it. I'm I not judging it. It's just a personal person. Now, what's right. wrong with it dating them if that's how they make their living? There's nothing wrong with it. I just what's as wrong a person with dating them. That's what I'm saying. Why wouldn't you date them? Maybe I should change the question. Why wouldn't you date them? Because I I just I I I don't. Well, okay. So this is something for like. Okay, this is interesting because I actually literally thought about this yesterday, the other day. Mm -hmm. As transparent as I am about mm -hmm. stuff for me, there's some things that I just want for myself. And I don't want somebody that has been all over oh, display and, and I, that you're you know, aware of because of his profession. But that doesn't mean the man who you're dating with has not had a lustrous past and he's been all over the place too. I, right. That's yeah, true. but it's not all on video either, all over the world. Well, as a stripper, that's what did Well, I ain't dating no stripper either. I, I mean, don't. clearly, I come with a past too. I mean, but so I'm not saying, but, but it's I'm not on video. I, well, that I know of. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to help you. Man. I mean, I'm just saying, it could be all poor nerd for all I know. Ooh, what station? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, well, uh, they, <laughs> what category? <laughs> um. I, but I think that like who you are right now, like mm -hmm. that is who I'm interested in. I don't. I mean, we all come with it. Some well, just say even if that person is a stripper by night, let's deal with the stripper first. Stripper by night. Oh, God, why day. are you trying to corner me? In, put me in a, put me in a corner. <laughs> no one puts baby in a corner. <laughs> well, Scott, I'm asking the question because I'm not interested in dating a stripper either. I know, and I have my own. So is this a real life scenario you're dealing with? No, no, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> no. My thing is. If you find out after you've been dating for six months that they have a part-time job during the day, but they strip at night. Then if I find out in six months, then they're ashamed of it themselves. Like, that should be something that they should have told well, me. Well, no, they could have said, well, I'm getting to know you until we're comfortable with each other. Okay, I how that's fair. I honestly don't. And you go to create Six house. months, I might have some sort of... I might be invested. Exactly. Uh, okay, that's my point. And you come over to Craig's house, and Craig got up having a party like he does with a brunch, and somebody you bring him with you, and somebody said, and the whisper in the room is, Shut up. right. And then I don't, you get whipped of it. I don't like being shanghai like that. I would, I would be pissed because I don't. Well, like he being, don't know the people who've seen him. It doesn't matter. The, no the, I, the 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 possibility of me being blindsided is there no matter yeah. whether it doesn't matter who he knows or mm -hmm. whatever the situation we could be walking down the street and that shit could happen so it doesn't matter 
he knows what he does as a profession on the side. Right. And he knows that the possibility of me being blindsided is that exists. So it's like I told you. I told my friend the other day some stuff because I was like, I don't want you to be in a room and you be blindsided with some information that you don't know. Like, I don't play those games because people people are not nice. And they, like, they do stuff just out of sport. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I agree. So you, you wouldn't date a stripper? I would not only because... Or a porn star. Or, uh, definitely not a porn star. Even if it was past. For um, me. Past? I, maybe I don't know. You would date a past a former stripper? Are they are they saved currently? <laughs> I don't know. I have a story. I honestly don't. don't. I have a story you know what? what you're saying. I'm gonna tell you something. So in my 54 years, mm -hmm. I have learned to not speak in definitives because in I, absolutes is how I call it. Right. I mm -hmm. don't know what I would do until I'm in it. Approach so generally it. speaking, that my answer is no. But somebody could walk in here that might just whisk me off, you know, sweep me off my feet, and right. I might be in it. So, right. you know, I don't, I don't know. Why well, would you date a stripper or a former horse porn star? I had interactions with one, and I didn't know he was one. And How so do I you not know? Why? Oh, first of all, <laughs> give me a second. Do you live? Are you an what? ostrich? Is your head buried in the sand? No, you ain't asking that question. <laughs> you know his head ain't buried in the sand. You want to get his head on the side of the table? Thank you. But what, what in the world? Well, he always got a First question. of all, Scott, I don't change porn, so how would I know? I'm porn is boring to me. Okay, I don't watch. I don't watch gay porn. So I would. So that's I my point. I wouldn't know. And I didn't know until I saw him, and I said, "Oh, wait a minute, is that the same person with the dreads, but all the tattoos?" But I'm like, "Whoa, whoa!" And this when I was on a project in Chicago, working for a year, met them at a restaurant because they were a waiter. Did he tell you? Oh, nope, nope. No, nope. he never yeah. told you. I just don't understand why he always got to uh, <laughs> maneuver and manipulate the. Scenario. No, because he just brought it up when he said that. <laughs> right. Well, no, my question was: have, have, Would you date a stripper? Or I said no. I did say no. Would you date? Then you a said, boy? "Have I?" And I said, "I have. I, I have a story to go with that because unknowingly he was doing porn because I met him in a restaurant. He was a waiter. Mm -hmm. He was doing porn on the side." And I saw the video, and he still never said anything. And I confronted him about the video. He goes, "Well, he gave it the term. He does modeling on the side." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's hilarious. Because uh, that was the term that people were using for. Uh, uh, I uh, do modeling on the side. No, because modeling. I think people use that term like that goes along with escorting, where you're yes. like coming yes. in someone's home and you're basically doing taking your clothes off in yes. private, yes. like. Porn is porn. <laughs> right. And he was doing porn. Okay. And he's and those videos are still out there now. And he has dreads and all these tattoos. And I'm just like, wait a minute. And it wasn't a relationship. It was getting to know the person. And there was some sexual oh, we know. interaction. <laughs> we know. We know. You didn't have to tell us that. Really? So, no. so, so you would not date a stripper or a former stripper. And you would not date a porn star or a former porn star. A former stripper, I would date because he's no longer in the activity. Okay. A former porn star, I'm with Scott. I don't know until the situation approaches it. If you're actively doing it, because I would always be reliving in my head, then one of your videos pop up. I'd go looking for you. It would bother me mentally because I'd be out there on the hunt. Let's see what have you done in these videos. That would be my first question. What do you what mean they're on happen? the hunt? What is that? What do you mean? You know, he said he would be, I would on, be the on the hunt. hunt. Looking, oh, you would be on looking, the for his oh, oh, okay. looking for his book. Oh, I see. I got you. All right. Former. But there, I mean, really, when you think about it, there they are jobs and they're performing, right? Like they're yeah. basically actors. So, with physical, oh, actors. is that what they are? I guess. With they're acting. I mean, with some are they are involved. they tied to those? Are there feelings involved when they're sometimes? Or are there are there feelings involved when they're having sex on? You have to ask yourself that question. Can you do that without any feeling constantly over and over and doing all this? You can You can if you pop a pill. I That's think true. after a while you become numb to it. I would right, imagine. yeah. And they might, I mean, truthfully, they might be looking for a more intimate connection because of all that. I would just wonder though, if I was dating like a former porn star, like could they be satisfied sexually just from regular sex and not all those acrobatics? They may not be interested in sex. They may be more interested in the intimacy because of all the sex. But they're gonna go to work for the sex. No, they're going to work for the chat. And the sex, because you got to perform the sex and you got to get it up to do the sex.
to get checked. You just can't go in there and say, oh, today, live in Uber. I can't do nothing today. Get it up. Or they got get yourself pill. ready. They got a pill yeah, they, yeah, they do. They yeah. They'll take something for that, or they put them cock rings But on. you still got to have them. Even if you take a pill, you still got to mentally have the thought, because it ain't going to just jump up because you took the pill. Listen to the expert. Mm. Well, I mean, that's why they have fluffers on set, oh, right? <laughs> what you know about fluffers? I mean, I've lived. <laughs> Tell them what fluffer is. <laughs> I've lived mm. a very full life. Mm. A fluffer is a person that is literally there just to get you ready. Like, you know, do a little whatever it takes to get you ready to go on is, set. Is there, is there a limit to because I'm, I'm asking now that I do not know, but I don't think I don't think that there's a limit. Like, you know, you have right. to do a little bobbing of the head. A little, you know, maybe oh. putting your tongue in places. Well, I mean, I now. Who knows? It depends on how much I can get your application. No, okay. yeah, it depends on how much the film has budgeted for a fluffer. <laughs> okay. But so Scott is saying you could date a former. I'm saying I don't know until it's in my face. Well, I don't say I'm not. I I my I am close to saying no, but then I I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm in the same boat when it comes for a strip for a former stripper. Yes, former porn star. Right now, I say no, mm. but the circumstance may present differently when if it was to happen. Because I don't think a person will come out and tell you in the first couple of uh, they should. They should. They should. But you think that's really going to happen? I mean, I reveal things in my first conversation. You. Everybody's not going to do that because of the judgment and ridicule. That I don't really give a, like because I actually know that people like, you know, let's talk about that for a second, because mm -hmm. here's the thing. Like when you date people and you first meet them, it, like I'm very clear that this is your PR person, mm -hmm. right? Like it's not the real you. I don't do that anymore. Like mm -hmm. it's like you're going to see me at my absolute worst. Mm -hmm. In fact, mm -hmm. like I'm, I want to look as disheveled as I possibly can look. Because I want you to know it can only get better. <laughs> so if you're attracted or to me worse. in this state, no, it's probably at my work. <laughs> if you're attracted to me in this state, you, you're only going to see me better. Right? But I also want you to know all the stuff. And Craig with. knows that I reveal stuff like personal right. stuff on my, like I just sat here and talked about my suicide attempt. Like I talk very casually about stuff. Um, because you need to know. Like, Life is about choices. You need information mm -hmm. to make a choice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't disagree with you, but you've reached that pinnacle in your life. Everybody's not there yet. Uh, I, no, I'm not saying everybody needs to subscribe to my value system. What I am saying is stop playing these. Putting my, I'm putting my best foot forward. You said this representative. Yeah, because that's some bullshit. And <laughs> first of all, it's 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 it's. It's exhausting. Right. And you're not going to be able to keep that representative there uh, all forever. Yeah, the game is doing every day all day. Well, we know that. Some of these kids don't even have shower curtains. <laughs> you know, they riding around here in BMWs and luxury cars. Right. Anyway, go on. I, I, that's, that's it. Now, you, you say you put your best foot. You, you, you were looking your worst. Yeah, generally. Like, I've gone on dates looking like this. Where it, uh, I want you to see, like, you look, you see this? <laughs> right. And so you see, I'll go out of the house like that. Like, I'll run to the grocery store, or I'll run to I don't care. the gym, or whatever. Like, I don't really care if I'm going to get something to eat or whatever. Like, I don't care. Right. But one of the things that I have realized, when you're when you're not your best, and you're just running around, going to the car wash, or getting people somebody, looking. that's when people look at it, and that's when they'll approach you. Right. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Because it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. No, and I agree with that. That's that has been my experience. I'm not trying to impress like at 54, it's it, it, I'm on the down slope of life. I don't give a fuck what you think. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> this is it. It's uh, a wrap. This is it. Okay. Oh my god. Okay. But yeah, so I don't know. I just feel like, you know, when you don't always have it all together when you leave yeah. the house, that's usually the time when people approach because you you feel a little, it's less intimidating. There yeah. we go. Mm -hmm. It's less intimidating, and people feel like, oh, he's approachable, or she's approachable. You know. Okay. Well, ask your 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 viewers at this particular point. Looking at the three of us, which one is more approachable? Just if they saw us out on the street. If y'all saw us out on the street, now watch what you about to say. <laughs> look, look, look. When I, when, listen, when 
we're not talking about personality and what you know about us so far. If you saw us visually, how we look right now in the street, which one of us looks more approachable? Why are you leaning in? <laughs> <laughs> he like that puss and boots cat leaning in and look twice. When the first time, when the first five people said Scott. Okay. Oh, I think they're talking about what I said before about not. No, not right now. They saying Scott. Scott, and then he says okay. Scott or Elliot. Well, first of all, this is the nastiest bitch sitting here. <laughs> this is the nastiest bitch. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's why. <laughs> <laughs> that might be why. Shonda is the only one I'm paying attention to. <laughs> Shonda is the only one I'm paying attention to, it. along with Doctor Lon's perspectives. <laughs> But this the nastiest bitch. In fact, they run in time neck and neck. Because if you get this bitch on the right day, she just might cuss you out. Now, I just told you, I was in Walmart to have the lady, the lady tugged me on my shoulder. I said, hi. hi. And these bitches, what's she touching me for? Oh, she know we live now, in COVID. True. We that's live in COVID. True. Why is she putting her hands on me? You should have been six feet anyway. That's very true. <laughs> That's really true. And I'm just saying based on appearance because to, to feed into what Scott is saying, they try to what happens? No, the cramp. Ooh. No, but we did hamstrings today. Uh -huh. That shit hurts. We did hamstrings. Uh, he did Pilates today. Mm. That cramp just That's snuck in there. Was the stuck up on okay. Mm. You want me to get my little massage again? No, it's good. I just need to see. Okay. <laughs> when, when he, because your leg was frozen, so I knew that's what it was. Oh, my God. With his, with his, Bangle boy shorts out <laughs> and his halter to top white beat up <laughs> with tattoos and not. Is that why they looking at Scott? He's giving flesh and toes. <laughs> Look, they ain't see the hole in my shorts. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Interesting. Oh my God. Listen, you guys have an amazing afternoon. We got to get up off of here. Elliot was supposed to be beating traffic. Yeah, yes. I'm supposed to be planting stuff. <laughs> and, and Scott is supposed to be planting stuff in his um, yard. You went planting in your yard. And your mom. Oh, out here. Your mom. Oh, yeah. Let's get out here. I'm going to help you. Oh, you just put them in another pot. In, the, in yeah, those yeah, little yeah. pots that he's yeah, yeah. But uh, listen, you guys have an amazing day. I think I'm going to be live tonight with Keon. I got to check with him. It is Thursday, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Time is just going by so fast. I know. Oh, God. Anyway, you have an amazing day. Uh, thank you, Marcellus, for the cash app. It's a, lo it's a lonely cash app, but thank you, Marcellus. <laughs> Bye, y'all.